Hello. 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 How are we doing? Are we doing good? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. I hope everyone's doing fan freaking tastic. Um, uh, we're just going to hang out and chat for a little bit and then, um, we're going to get to the live reaction and it is going to be a doozy. I moved, um, I moved my lights. So they're right on either side of my computer. So like it looks better. So I'm very happy about that. Very happy about that. What is everyone doing? You're, <laughs> you're high AF. I love that for you. I will be just having a white claw. I have dinner at 8 p.m. So we do have a hard stop <laughs> at 8 p.m. Eyebrows on point as always. Thank you. Thank you. Super nice of you. Okay. Let me also uh, send the link to this to... Um, all right. To one of our special guests for tonight. I thought we'd just, you know, get get some people in here first and then, you know, we can hang out and chat and then we'll get uh, we'll get her in here as well. Also, the video that we'll be reacting to, I had to um, <laughs> I had to like open it and flip it because for some reason it was uh, it's a Zoom call, but it was like uh, not horizontal, uh, not diagonal. What am I doing? <laughs> it was up and down. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, we can't do that. So yeah, it is a um, a young living Zoom call where I, and I even told her too, I was like, girl, I haven't watched it yet. Cause it's one of the first things she asked me. She's like, hell yeah. Cause her and I haven't done a video together and we've been wanting to. Um, she does live in Florida also though. So I was like, why don't I just come over there? Like I would rather just do that. And like the husbands can hang out. Cause I, re I really hate doing, um, I hate doing collabs like over zoom and whatnot. Obviously this is a little bit different. Um, vertical. There we go. What am I doing? Right. My God. Um, yeah. Brain fart. So I hate doing collabs like on like zoom and like through video and it's just so much harder and you know, like the vibes aren't really there, but then I was like, you know what? Let me, let me just let me just see if she wants to join because I feel like I've done one with like like a live or whatever with a bunch of other people, you know, a live show with other guests and I haven't really done one with her yet. I think we've been in one together, but I like her a lot. So I'm excited. Uh, what brand and lip color are you wearing? I am wearing Artist by uh, Maybelline. It's the Super Stay Matte Ink and it is the shade 120. All right. So yeah, so I had to save that. So we're just hanging out for a bit right now. Lip color is epic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My hair is like not wanting to be down the middle right now. I'll tell you. It's wanting to do its own thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can like see my filler migration right now. <laughs> oh, well. Getting my lips dissolved on Monday. So that'll be fun. I heard it hurts like hell, so I'm, like, kind of not excited. But it'll be all right. And you always look so pretty. Thanks. <laughs> Drop a two in the chat if you're, if you're ready. Reacting to which company? Um, it is a Young Living a Zoom call that we will be reacting to. My One of my eyebrows is higher than the other. Oh, well. Oh, well. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, are you, when are you going to be doing another um, Bossier video? Um, I don't know. Maybe next, next, I don't know. Next week, maybe. Um, oh, sorry. I guess I should unfeature your comment. Um, don't they dissolve on their own after a while? So, yes, the um, the product like metabolizes in your like in the spot where you have it same with any other injectable so you have to get it redone after a certain amount of time but if the um 
if the juvederm or Restylane or whatever you have, if the filler goes like up into here, like it can migrate, meaning that bitch moves <laughs> like that shit moves. So it like goes like right up here. You can actually see it right there. That little shadow right there. We don't want that. Okay. So yeah. Oh, actually you can see it good on that side too. I'm usually pretty good at like when I'm contouring and stuff and like doing my face makeup, I just have like a little bit of BB cream on right now, but you like can't really see it. Um, but it'll go like into here and it not look good. And that's what gives you like the duck lip. So I don't want that. <laughs> um, yeah. Having one brow higher than the other gives you the permanent. Yeah. I don't know what my like face is doing right now. I feel like it like looks weird. Should I try to fix my brows before our special guest gets here? Because I'm trying to look really pretty for her. She's very beautiful. Do you have any guesses on who it is? Yeah, but see, you know what really is rude? When I look in the mirror, like, they look fine. <laughs> so what's happening? Okay, so it's this one. Oh, yeah, it's definitely that one that's taller. My nephew right now can do this trick where he, um, where he like can push one eyebrow up and it's so crazy. So this is kind of like the pre-show. Oh, is it Hannah? Is it Hannah? Is it Hannah? Is it Sav? Is it Isabella? Young living equals Kayla. Is that an equation? I'm guessing Isabella. Lots of good guesses. Imagine it's Bosley. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine? No, you couldn't. You just really couldn't. Isabella does live in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, she lives in Kansas, I think. Right? <laughs> I always get confused because the place she lives is literally in the middle of nowhere like to the point where i zoomed in and i was like what yeah tony and i always joke with her that she lives in the middle of nowhere uh, i can wiggle my ears so i just figure out how to do it that's amazing i love that for them i can wiggle my ears too probably help if i showed you them wait no only this one's moving Is it moving? I can feel it moving. And this is a cool trick, too, that I showed him. And he was like, what? Lizard tongue or lizard whatever. <sighs> My special guest is Wiggum. Yes, Wiggum is always a special guest. Um, But it looks like that someone's already here. I'll give you I'll give you guys a really good hint. She sits in a room with just one plant. Um, is someone preggers? Shit, not me. Angelique? Nope. Angelique sits in her room with one dollhouse. And bow, bow, bow. <laughs> You're really hyping me up here. Oh my you, god. I am. You're my favorite. I'm so such excited. I'm such a stan of you. I don't know if you know this, but I oh absolutely gosh. am. That is so sweet. Well, I'm a stan am, as well. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, I am a Hannah stan. Always. I'm so stoked. I've yeah. had like a whole day's worth of chores. I'm just excited to be sitting down, okay? I've been on my feet <laughs> since 9 a.m. Like since the moment my feet hit the floor this morning, I have not sat down. So but oh yeah, I got your DM and I'm so excited that this is kind of like impromptu on, on a whim. Yeah. I love it. Well, I can't relate because I've been in my office all day um, just like painting on my iPad. Oh, that's fun. Think, girl, you would think that painting on an iPad would be easy, like easier oh, no. than like painting on a canvas. Because And I, I do that as well, but it's not. It's actually harder. No. No, I am it's like exactly 0% artistic. I have no artistic ability whatsoever. And I can't even imagine like trying to like digitally create something. Absolutely not. So 
Let that me show you what I look like nice and relaxing kind of day. Yeah. Let me show you what I did then. Also, how cute is that? Yes, I saw that. I saw that you posted about that. I definitely like I thought it was a notebook and I was like, why is she showing like a basic ass composition notebook? And then you open it up and I was like, this is so cool. Like, why is this bitch so excited? Like, we get it, Chelsea, <laughs> it's like, oh, Chelsea, you're not that cool. Chelsea, how old are you? Like, <laughs> How long have you been on the planet? Right. And it's really bad. Um, OK, so I it's off. Of, my reference photo is at one off of my Instagram. Uh -huh. And this is. I haven't done Tony's like Tony's face yet, but in my, I haven't done my like eyelashes, so I still have to do that. But oh my god! Oh no, I could never. That is right? insane! Yeah. Wow, that's really impressive. Yeah, I, could never. I still have to do like a lot more shading and stuff, and yeah, I. Ugh. That is so cool. I miss painting and stuff. But then I was like, I don't feel like going to buy more canvases. I have like four or five just blank ones in my, um, cause who the fuck doesn't have just a bunch of blank canvases and like six easels in their shed. But yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Talent, art, you know. Amazing. Um, Multifaceted yeah. you are. <laughs> Girl, I ain't just a set of great titties. All right. <laughs> incredible um oh but y'all if you are not subscribed to hannah please do um hannah has honestly just skyrocketed over the last i'd say like four or five months and it's been absolutely amazing i'm, I'm actually going to your channel right now she has forty one thousand subscribers and i am so proud of her she's Thank amazing you. and just so pretty and so consistent oh what are some other things I could say about you? <laughs> it's um, been yeah. a real whirlwind. And like, <clears throat> if I'm going to fangirl for a moment, I've watched Chelsea's videos since like, I don't know, whenever you started being consistent with like the anti-MLM kind of thing. And I watched your videos for probably like five or six months because I have always loved anti-MLM content and things like that. And it's always something that I've been afraid to jump into. But because of how kind of like open – you are with doing YouTube full time or like, you know, your growth and creating videos and just kind of like, I I've appreciated your live stream specifically because I feel like you are very open about like, this is the okay. process and I'm just like along for the ride and here's yeah. what I've learned and things like that. And I think through particularly your live streams, like watching those, I was like, if she could do it, I could do it kind of thing. And, yes. and it's always been one of those things where like, I've had the I do struggle with imposter syndrome a lot. And I've always had that idea of like, if Chelsea, Deanna, Isabella, Savannah, if all of them are out here doing it, like where would I fit into that kind of thing? And I think that's why I put it off for so long. But all of that to say, I do feel like you've been a good influence in that way of kind of like being very just like open and public and vulnerable mm -hmm. about kind of what it takes to go through starting a channel and taking it seriously and doing it as a job and things like that. And none of those things were ever on my radar period. And so I think that it's, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say other than like, I appreciate you. <laughs> and uh, that no, just keep on. going. Keep making me feel good. <laughs> It's, it's so funny that up for like two hours straight. No. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Anyway, all of that to say, like, I, that's kind of what like, gave me the little nudge to kind of try it out. And then I think it was like my second anti-MLM video that somehow you came across and shouted me out. <laughs> and that honestly did kind of kickstart the growth of my channel, period. I feel like I did get a lot of your subscribers in the beginning coming over and showing me support. So that was, I don't know, just thank you for that. I appreciate that. I remember commenting on your earrings and yes. you were wearing like dangly earrings and like yes. this really cute dress. And I was like, we love like we love this it's like, it's like you're amazing <laughs> and um yeah i remember i specifically remember you wearing cute ass earrings and i was like i like this bitch it is funny though that you say um my live streams because i i do that's like one thing that my people that don't like me are like she's so mean to people in live streams oh. meanwhile you're like oh my god thanks <laughs> well <laughs> it's it's more so just like i remember you just being open about like yeah, today was a hard day or yeah, today was a good day or I hit these milestones or here's, you know, here's how I structured my day and I got this done today. And 
like all of that, I think gives people kind of an insight into what it really does take to create the videos that everyone just like sees the final product of. Right. And so I, I liked that because I already had a channel. I was already making videos. They just weren't related to anti MLM at that point. Yeah. I had a few actually, like I had a few that I did in 2020, but I never was consistent with it until recently. So I don't know. I just think all of that was interesting to hear from someone who had a channel was making videos and then could, I guess, like see someone's growth and success out of it in the way that you've had. So I think yeah. all that's really cool. Well, I, I definitely appreciate those kind words. Thanks for yeah, hyping me up, girl. Um, a lot of people actually, it's why I put up this comment because a lot of people um, ask me why I don't do the, uh, horror story videos oh. anymore and y you do them Deanna does them I don't I don't really know of anyone else who does them but I think that um you y'all do them wonderfully I stopped doing them because of um, my dyslexia and dyslexia sucks ass and it is also a very hard word to spell <laughs> Yes, we um, talked about this. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I actually answered that in a Q&A and you were like, why is it such a hard word? And I was like, bitch, I second guess myself every time. Why I is the word dyslexia it. so difficult to spell? Like you think that they would, you know. Girl, that and word. the word lisp. Like how oh. dare people, why would they do that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, oh, Sean, thank you so much for the super chat and Quinn. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you. Um, Yeah, it's, it's because, you know, it took me before I had an editor as well, but um, it would take me so long to film them because um, a lot of times when things aren't like written the way that I write or yes. not very well written sometimes, and that's okay. That's everyone has their strengths. That's fine. Um, I'm fucking dyslexic. But the thing <laughs> is, is that when I'm reading it, it's really hard to try to get like your rhythm, especially when you are dyslexic and you do have ADHD. So it takes a while. Um, it would take me sometimes like, I would have like four hours of footage for yeah. essentially a 45 minute video or like a yeah. 30 minute video. And then the videos, like it was really hard for me to edit them. It took so long. Um, and I personally, it didn't, I specifically remember I was sitting here and I was filming one and I had messed up so many times reading it. I got so frustrated. I was about to cry and I looked at the camera and I looked at myself in the viewfinder and I said, why am I doing this? Like, yeah, this doesn't yeah. bring me joy. I'm done. Like, I'm never going to post one of these videos again. But, you know, y'all do, y'all do them so well. And I absolutely, like, absolutely love them. Actually, um, Sloan was telling me that he, I don't know if you've watched his videos, but um, yeah. he was telling me that he, he watches, uh, he's watched some of those videos of yours and he really likes them. And wow, he, thank you. you know, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, he, <laughs> we, were, we were at lunch when he was still here before he went off to, um, well, a few other places than LA now and he's thriving out there, but we're at lunch and he's like, do, do we like Hannah? We like Hannah, right? And I was like, I love Hannah. And he, he was like, yeah, he was like, I, I like her videos. I, I think she's, she's really nice. He was like, she's like the nicer version of you. And I'm like, yeah, actually, yes. She's the much nicer version. But I was like, but we also have like the same, like the same sense of humor, which is good too. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I, want to highlight how difficult those stories are to film and edit. And I can only imagine being dyslexic as well, because yeah, you see the finished version and I can relate to having the footage being like two to three times as long as the finished product. And I'm, I'm re saying the same sentence 10 times over. And I've also been in that position where I'm like about to cry. So frustrated with myself. Yeah. I can't possibly like read it one more time, but yes, I completely agree. They're very, yeah, it, um, and I do not blame you. I don't blame you in the slightest, especially being dyslexic. Like this is not, oh. not the way that this should go. Yeah. So. It's like, I, and the thing is I can read like to myself like perfectly, but then, and even in a live stream before, like I've done, um, I remember I was like reading like an Edgar Allan Poe book and I read like, uh, like one of my favorite stories. Um, I read like the Raven and then I read, uh, the cask of the Amontillado I read as well, which that one's like real hard to read out loud, but mm -hmm. for anyone, um, but I read that during a live stream once, like people loved it. And they're like, damn, like you're doing, you're doing so well. Cause people know like how hard it can be for me sometimes. And then with yeah. anxiety as well. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I, I love to read. I, we have way too many books in our house. I love to read. I'm constantly reading like five books at a time. And mm -hmm. so it's funny when like, I, you, it's basically just like in all in your head and it, it's frustrating, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. someone said it's the naughty and nice of anti-MLM. Oh, love you. Oh my gosh. Gosh. <laughs> so when, that makes me naughty. <laughs> I was just going to say, is Chelsea the naughty one? Because I think you're just yeah. the more like 
unfiltered one. I find myself really filtering myself for my videos. And I think a lot of that comes from, it's not that I'm not thinking certain things. It's just that I don't say them because I might be in, like going into teaching one day and like elementary school teacher. I feel like yeah. there's, you know, you have, there's like a certain level of like the way that you present yourself that I don't mm -hmm. want anything I say to like come back like for me in the future. I don't know, but trust me, I, I, there's a lot of things that I wish I could say that I don't <laughs> only because of that reason, you know? Yes. The, but. I, um, I, if this ever just implodes, which it probably will, but if this ever does, I'll just go back to sales and no one cares there. Um, right. Yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> yeah. I would say the, like, I feel like I, I just always look at the lens of my camera thinking, is my future employer going to watch this? Like is a future principal of an elementary school going to watch this video and make a decision about me as a human based on what I'm saying kind of thing. And that awesome. is like this, that's like the scary filter that I put on everything where I'm like, is what I'm saying right now going to come back to help me in the future. But yeah, cause I, I recognize that YouTube is so unstable. We have no idea what's going to happen. So I'm just it, trying to keep all my avenues open for the degree that I paid a lot of money for. And <laughs> maybe we'll go back yeah. to in the future. But. Yeah. It's, it, it's wild. I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky that, I mean, it, as well as you, you know, I, I had, I had my career and I could, I can go back mm -hmm. in any, absolutely yes. any moment. Um, it's like a really nice safety net, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And my, um, I, even my, my manager and the director at the company I was previously at, they both, contacted me the other day and they're like we really need you back and I'm like oh, wow it's been a year and a half guys no like, yeah I'm not coming back and they're like our team really you're like I'm thriving thank you very much yeah I was like <laughs> I am doing great though and they're like but and I'm like no I don't I don't because I know what's gonna happen I'm the same thing I always did in sales I'm gonna get stuck and I'm gonna not stuck but I'm su I was such an overachiever when it came to sales like I would work mm -hmm. pick up all the shifts I would volunteer oh, for like yeah. the shitty shifts and um, I would just work way, way, way too much. And I, I never got to see Tony, even though I worked from home. Um, mm -hmm. And now the great thing is, is in the middle of the day, if he's off or any, anything he wants to do, he's like, hey, want to go to, you know, Home Depot? And I'm like, of course I do. No, I yeah. don't. But of course, <laughs> I will. I'll hang out with you. And he loves that. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ashley. Um, by the way, whatever. Not that I need to say this publicly, but whatever super chats I get from this one, I'll be sending you oh. half of them. You don't have to um, worry about it. It's okay. Uh, don't. No, it's you don't have an option. <laughs> okay. I'm going to send you a PayPal. Um, anyways. Hi, Karina. I hope you hey. are feeling um, amazing and that your day has gotten better. I know you've been through some absolute shit today. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we having some uh, Chardonnay? What's happening? Oh, you no, know, I don't drink Chardonnay. I can't bear Chardonnay. It's, <laughs> it's uh, Sauvignon Blanc, I believe. Either that or Pinot Grigio. I think it's a Sauv Blanc. But, oh, okay. We're but sure. yes, I am drinking. <laughs> Oh. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. All right. So are you are you ready? Because I I know that uh so Hannah was like, oh, did you pre-watch it? And I was like, no, I I, I didn't. Okay. This is some, let me just talk about this. I I can't not pre-watch them. Like this is honestly the first time, literally, Chelsea, I've ever not pre-watched something. And I know that that's your style, and I love that. You're and that is something chaos. that I Let's can go. never be. Like that is something I will never be able to do. So this will be really interesting for me. <laughs> I've never like not vetted something and like, I don't know. And I think that that's just because I like to have an idea of the points I can make, but I feel like by yeah. now I should be able to do that I'm, on the fly. <laughs> we'll see. see, this is good because you're well planned out and I am chaotic. We are absolutely very different and it's going to be. That's okay. And it's going to be gonna great. Be fabulous. Yeah. I was actually talking to, um. I was actually talking to Tony about um, you and your husband. Remember what, what I was telling you? I was like, okay, just come live here. Yeah. Remember when I was, yeah. remember when I was hammered and I was, I was yelling at you on Instagram? Yes, I do. I do remember this. Oh, yeah. That was hilarious. No, it's like, great. We have a master doing? plan. We're going to get AJ to retire. We're going to get him to become a police officer. And then we're going to move to Tampa so that we can be couple friends. Yeah. Oh, I'm like plan. absolutely. Actually, yeah. well, you know what I just learned yesterday is that I thought we were going to be here for three years and now we're going to be here for four. So I'll be here until 2025 or something. Hell right yeah. Now. So I'm really excited about that because the military, like picking up and moving all the time is the most stressful thing in my entire life. I've and heard. so, well, in a lot of people's lives, but me in 
me in particular, that's like the number one stressor in my mm -hmm. life is the idea of having to move multiple times. And so having an extra year is like the best. And we love that's it. That's amazing. Today, so. I love that. Well, y'all, um, y'all live like, I believe right by, I mean, realistically, like, <laughs> I know people say that's about this coast as well, but on your side of Florida, I just imagine I'm like, yeah, no, it's, it's right, right by it. And Tony's like, so I was telling him, I was like, yeah, um, his parents bought a, uh, like a condo over there. And I was like, yeah, it's like, they live like right by it. <laughs> No, they don't. They live like two hours away from him. Like, no. Oh my gosh. That's Drive funny. up and down that coast in two hours. That's all right. Right. Yeah. We're like an hour south of Daytona on like the Space Coast. We live right by the Kennedy Space Center, basically. So oh my god, you then area. you do live right by <laughs> because their their beach house is like um in between those. Oh two perfect. Places. Yeah. Well shit. All right. I get I guess. The three of us are coming for you then. Oh, yeah. That includes Wiggum. <laughs> and I cannot wait to snuggle the the boys. Um, oh, my gosh. Meaning your cat. <laughs> um, all right. Let's let's do it. Let's get into this. All right. I'm hold on. I'm excited. Hold on. Um, all right. Video file. Do you know, like, what the topic is of the call or anything? Are so. We Okay, so some oh thank you so much, Matt and Audrey. Y'all are so sweet. Um yes, thank you. Matt, Matt always says he's like, Hey, my spiffy friend, whenever he's <laughs> and he's like, Hey, since I'm your only male viewer, other other than the <laughs> two only other ones. I know. Um, I love the male viewers because I recognize them all. There's like five, yeah. right? And they're great. Matt included. I think Matt's watched some of my videos and found uh, my live streams too. Oh no. Oh, no. It says this video it ha uses a unique code that your browser does not support. What does that mean? Rude. What? I know. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Neither have you. I. Can you download it? Is it downloaded or is it just It is here? downloaded. Okay. Um, okay. I think it's because it's MOV instead oh, of MOV4. Okay. Now let me check that it's going to stream. But see, the problem is, is that it's sideways if it's MP4. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean. You know what? That, Let's, it is uh, what it is, I feel like. I'm, I are like let's let's ask the people. Are we, hello, you two spiffies. See, there we go. Um, okay, are you okay with that? Try a different browser. Never, I will never do that. Um, <laughs> all right, are y'all okay with the fact of it if it's like that? Because if not, what I can do is I can just export it as um, an MP4. If everyone like absolutely hates the idea that it would possibly be, you know. What would what's the time frame on that? Would that take like five minutes, fifteen minutes? How long? Yeah, is it would, long? yeah, it would probably would probably take longer because it's a big okay. file. Um, yeah, right. That Lauren, that's what I said too. Yeah, same. The sound is more important, anyways. Okay. Um. All right. Let's let's get to it. You know. All right. All right. Sound <laughs> kind of weird, but it's fine. <laughs> You know, that's, I feel like that's what Tony says to me almost every night. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this, is, this is weird, but is okay. all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, we don't care. <laughs> now, yeah, we don't care. I speak for all of us. This is why I love. All right. I love, I love our people. Uh, welcome, Catherine. I was waiting for you to get here. Um, all right, let's, let's do it. Um, also, just a quick heads up. The title of this file when it was sent to me is called juicy ly call oh so it's supposed okay. that's it's supposed to be really <gasps> juicy chelsea i got sent this call too i haven't opened it i literally saw this in my inbox and i opened it up and i said oh that's mm -hmm. sideways i'll come back to it <laughs> well bitch we ain't coming back to it we're doing it now <laughs> we're doing it right now yeah I, I literally saw this in my email and i was like oh i don't have time to flip a file right now <laughs> I yeah, like, bitch, I like thought I did. Later. Oh my god, I love it. Okay, perfect. Oh lord. I love it. Let's this, do it. You know what's funny is this same person probably obviously sent sent it to both of us. And that that happens a lot. And it's a fine. lot. I see you CC'd on like a lot of things that people send to me. Oh my god, I love that. I love how like none of us answer the e emails, I feel like. It's just like, oh cool, you sent me that. Great. Or at yeah, least I, I don't separate them into yeah. like folders. And I'm I'm like, okay, I'll come back to this when I'm same ready. Same, same. Same, same, same. Sweet. Um, we're we're doing it. Uh, now, if you want, just raise your hand, okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Oh, look, there it is. Oh, there we are. Yay. Okay, that worked. Oh my gosh, I actually did something technological. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with myself. I'm so bored already. Yeah, let's get to it. All right, let's uh, let's go a minute and 30 seconds in. Hopefully they're actually talking about something. Skip all the pleasantries. There's only one wide brim hat. That's weird. Two or three more minutes for you guys to get some more people hopping in and then we will get started. Okay, never mind. Let's go uh, two, two or three, three more minutes. minutes. <laughs> three minutes in. Uh, tell us where you guys are zooming in from and what oil are you putting on your head <laughs> oh, you, you, mean, you mean an entire bottle of frankincense like joby does and then i get in trouble yes. <laughs> what type of oil are you putting on your head i love that that's just a casual question like oh what what oil is it today <laughs> what like, are you drenching yourself in yeah do you, are they just like putting it yeah. on I've seen, I've like featured videos before of people doing that and they say that it's to like center you, like putting it on your scalp is like one of the best places to apply it. I don't ask me. I don't know. Do you think they ever put it up their butt? I wouldn't say that it's out of the question, but I don't know. <laughs> Leave it to me to bring up butt stuff. All right. <laughs> um, all right. So let's while they're drenched, let's go to four minutes and hopefully they've actually done something. Um, what toxin are you marinating yourself in right now? Same. Incredible. Uh, what MLM are they in? How do you not know already? They're in Young Living. All right. Let's go one more minute and then we'll start. All right. Now what? what? <laughs> How many are minutes you are we in now? Like six or seven? Four. Just one more, just one more minute. Just one more minute. Okay. We're eight minutes in. Okay. We should be good. And if we're not, we got a problem. What if it's, what if like they're just fucking with us <laughs> and, and they do that the entire call? <laughs> it's an hour long of just, oh, we'll get started in just a couple minutes. Just a yeah. couple minutes. We're going to wait. We're almost there. That would, that would be amazing. I would that would actually it. be really, good, really smart on their part. Yeah, like that, that would, that would be such a good bit as a queen of comedy myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. We're at nine minutes essentially. So hopefully they actually start talking. Enrolling new people really is fun. If I'm honest, like I have not been enrolling like I used to because it hasn't been fun, but I'm ready to bring the fun back. Um, like our friend Brittany said, like, Monday starts now. Like we don't have to wait till a new year, a new month, a new thing to just turn it around and start something new. Like you could decide today and you can make a decision. This is what you're going to be doing moving forward. So, um, that's, what's fun for me. What is fun for you? Like, I just want to challenge you to like, really think about it. And maybe you're going to have to bring some fun back and think about what used to be fun, but also don't, like there's, there's also, we can't just like look back and be like, I want it to be like it used to be. Um, we can't have that like nostalgic thinking all the time. Like we can make things fun that are brand new. So I asked you guys in my giveaway, which I'm giving away a whole 15 ml bottle of Frank. OMG, it's your lucky day. Go con <laughs> it's your lucky Congratulations. Day. It's your lucky day. Um, the, the, just the phrasing of Enrolling is fun, guys. It didn't used to be fun, but it's fun. And then now it's fun. And you have to think what could be fun. And you have to make it fun again. Like, oh, my God. I, well, it's fun if people are actually signing up. But I have to imagine that, like, as time goes on, it gets more and more difficult to get new people to join, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like she's like, we're thinking of it nostalgically. Like, in the past, it's been so fun to enroll new people. But, yeah, like – trying to get people on board is fun when they're actually giving into it. But I don't know. That's kind of where my brain was going. Like it might not be fun recently because <laughs> I get the impression that people don't join as frequently as they used to. Ab absolutely. But then also with young living, like they, they've lost a bunch of people recently yeah. who yeah. are going over to whether it's Q sciences or yeah. over the last few years, they've lost a lot of people to Modere and yeah. It's kind of, it's really interesting to see them do this, like, 
I don't want to say damage control, but essentially that's what it is to try to get more people on there to, to like replenish, right? Because mm-hmm. we're seeing that from uh, the Monate people as well right now too, because they just lost the yeah like almost fifty thousand yeah to, they're um, hurting yeah everybody, and so it's hilarious when they're like pushing and pushing and pushing for recruiting, but it's like the top people doing it, and they don't really. I feel like they don't know how to sell other or like recruit other than because realistically, when you're at the top, like people like Jacqueline Ortega and like all those people at the top of Monet and whatever other company, they like people just come to them and just want to sign up with them because they have a huge following and like they're gorgeous. And, you know, they have a fortress on a lake like the some people at the top of Monet. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's so interesting when they're like, yeah, and so like do this and it's fun and fun and yeah. fun and fun and fun. Yeah, it's so easy, right? When you're at the top, like things are, I'm sure, a lot simpler, like thought about in simpler terms if you're at the top when in reality, like the advice they're giving is not realistic at the bottom. Yeah. But Well, yeah, because a girl, all their work is essentially done for yeah, them because yeah. they just have teams recruiting and recruiting and recruiting for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Gross. Okay. Um, all right. Comment on the post in the group, but you guys had some amazing things. You said you're bringing fun back by doing in-person gatherings. That was like hands down the number one thing that you guys said. You were excited to get back with your people again. A lot of you said you want to get excited about the products like it's your first time. Yes. And I know so often it's like, we feel like we've said the same thing over and over and over and over because we have said the same thing over and over and over, but we can find a way to say that in a new, fresh way and just make it simple and make it fun and share, document, share what you're doing, what you're using, how you're doing it. I'm going to lose my shit. If she, should every time she, no, I'm, I'll be, I'll have to take an Uber to dinner if... <laughs> If I say, if we drink every time she says fun, but I feel like we should. It's so fun. Yeah, I know. It's like, well, what she, she just said something in there. Like we have to make it new and different or something along those lines. And I feel like things are just continually evolving, right? Like the way that they're trying to recruit people has to be evolving because people catch on to the old strategies. Yeah. It's, it's like how the how now they call it instead of ne- or refer to it a lot of the times instead of network marketing, social retail, social yes. selling. And it's like, no, it's the girl. same crap. It's just rebranded a new way yeah. to like, well, and that's to what she just on. said. Yeah. Crazy. Well, all right. I guess, I guess we're going to, all right, everyone, if you don't have a drink, grab one. If you don't drink we go. The water <laughs> um, and you need a fun counter. Yeah, we do. I wish I had one. Um, I'll just, I'll just get drunk, I guess. Thank God I didn't take an edible. Oof, I'd be (laughs) dead right now. All right. A lot of you said that you were excited to give things away, which I loved because Young Living is such a generous company. And we all know that getting oils and products in people's hands and letting them experience it is what is going to like pull them in. So I love that so many of you said that you want to have fun by giving things away, by having people in your home, by doing giveaways by connecting with people. Um, Oh, there's my timer. Okay. There's my timer. I've said fun 17,000 times already. (laughs) Oh God. Um, I, by the way, I'm taking notes. (laughs) I really wish I had something in here, but I don't, don't worry, girl. I got you. Um, (laughs) so as people were saying, they want to give things away, Mm -hmm. giving things away for them means essentially losing money because if you're buying things to give away or you're giving away from your own stash you are I mean you're essentially losing money and I think that's very interesting and it's really just another way for your upline and the company to make money off of you if you're buying things to give away right right I I don't know this for sure so don't quote me on this but I think Young Living has or maybe it's doTERRA I don't freaking know one of them has some kind of program where it's like you spend this much and you get a free oil or like there's like a point system or something. Maybe I'm totally getting this wrong, but I I do feel like the essential oil MLMs in particular have so much backstock or just so much crap on hand. And I don't know if that's from these programs of like you get a free oil with every order or whatever it is, or those two companies in particular have 
PV requirements every month that you can fulfill just by purchasing. So I just feel like there's so much emphasis in those two in particular to like just be continuously buying oils. And like, like it's a whole thing with like the oil wall and like showing off your collection and Girl. organizing them in rainbow order and stuff. Like it's crazy how much yeah. oil they have in their house. And I feel like it's kind of a status symbol or something mm -hmm. like here's like, look at my collection or look at how much extra I have on hand to just give away. And if only these people kept good books and kept a good record of what's being spent versus made, I think that that would make a world of difference, but yeah, that's you know a, I know. <laughs> no, right. Um, you yeah, know, that's a, yeah, a point that I made in, I think a video that, I already filmed one that's already out. I don't remember. I, my life's a blur. But in one of them, I said specifically that um, the like around this, not this time, but like April and May will essentially essentially the first quarter of the year is when most people who are going to drop out of an MLM, that's when they drop out because they realize, mm. oh, my God, I've like they look at their profit and loss report yeah. if they even have made $600 with the company, not profit, mm -hmm. but if they, they've even made that much, um, then you do get a 1099 and you have yeah. to do taxes for it and, you yeah. know, it, all that. So then they would have to do, you know, okay, how much have I spent? But a lot of times people don't even realize how much they have spent. Like, I mean, there, there are some things like last year there, I wasn't as organized as I should have been. And there were some things where, like realistically, like for uh, a trip we took, like I should, I put it on my, my credit card and I should have had my company like pay me back for that. But I didn't. Cause I was just like, I don't care. And I should have cared because it would have made a little bit of a difference. Still, I got fucked in taxes, but <laughs> what happens when you do own a business and, you know, are successful with it. And, um, a lot of the people, not to you know throw shade but they don't know what that's like because they are spending so much money and a lot of them aren't making enough money for it to even like matter with their taxes and for them to even see that difference mm -hmm. um yeah it's it sucks and i don't like it so yeah do you have anything else to add before we continue no okay keep covering it Okay. Oh, someone said shout out from another male who was addicted Thanks. to both three time. <laughs> Welcome love to that. the club. Ooh, we love the boys. Yes. We love the boys. Matt, don't worry. I still love you. And obviously Ian as well. Own owning a business is hard. Yes, my boo. It is y'all my my Patreon not Patreon. Uh my channel members and my uh Discord people know how much I complain about <laughs> about fucking taxes and like being yeah, a business owner. It is rough. Yeah, it's the fucking worst. Okay. That's what I want to say, but I want you to think about it. What is fun for you and how are you going to bring the fun back? If you're not coming to a convention, come to convention. We cannot wait to see you there. That's all. I'm going to hand it over to Adrian who's hanging out by the pool. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so if you're not, I didn't even get to put my drink down. Um, if you're not coming to convention, you have to come. We want to see you there. What are your, other than they suck in their cult gatherings, what are your thoughts on not just MLM conventions, but why do they have, because I obviously have my own thoughts, oh my but God. Why, why do you think they, the company mainly has the, this type of um, the gathering? I have two running theories. One being okay. they're trying to get the most money out of their reps as possible, right? Because that's that's where the company makes money. They don't make money on retail sales to people mm -hmm. not in the company. So, well, allegedly, okay, allegedly. But I feel like it's a way to be like, come buy this ticket, buy our merch that we produce, um, like get everyone together, make a quick buck. But my second more predominant running theory is that it's a way to like reinvigorate people basically. So in a very culty kind of way, come to convention. It's so heavily emphasized. Everyone needs to be there. It's expected of you and you're going to be talked down to if you don't come and it's, you know, all these things. And I think that that is because with these businesses, they're so, there's a little fuzzy right here. They're, um, <laughs> sorry, really distracted. Um, 
I think that there is so much potential for people to fall off the wagon, right? Or get disillusioned or feel like they aren't, you know, doing as well as they hoped or whatever. And maybe some people are good with their profit and loss and they realize that they're not making any money at all and all these things to kind of convince people that maybe this isn't what they want to be a part of anymore. But then if there's a convention, if there's a trip, if there's a whatever on the calendar that maybe you've already bought a ticket for, you feel like you have to go because it's sunk cost fallacy, like, well, crap, I already committed to going to this. Or it's really pressured and put on you to go. And then when you do, because of all the manipulation, because of all the cult tactics and the love bombing and the praise of the people at the top and whatever, people leave these events, in my opinion, either they realize it's a cult and they get out or they're like incredibly excited and reinvigorated and inspired and motivated. And that carries them along until the next convention, whenever that may be. So yeah. that's my, like, that's the biggest reason I think that that, that they hold those kinds of events is like, get everyone together, brainwash them a little bit, send them on their way, hope they stay a little bit longer, basically. Yes. I, I agree with everything, everything you just said. Um, it's the thing I can, and I don't know if you are, um, be spiritual at all or religious or anything, but the, the thing that I can relate it to Um, that makes the most sense for me is like when, when I was in middle school and high school and even, you know, in, in college and, and now, you know, when you go to, you know, if I haven't been to church in a while, cause me, me and Tony are, you know, spiritual, we love, Mm -hmm. we love God. We, you know, we believe in Jesus, all that, Mm -hmm. um, to have deep conversations, whatever. But, (laughs) and I, and I, I pray almost every single night and I do Mm -hmm. talk to God and stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I really sometimes have a hard time with, especially with the work that we do. Um, I have a hard time with the like organized religion and all that. Like for instance, we, we were in a church for one of our nephews, uh, like, like kindergarten ceremony graduation thing. And me and Tony the whole time are like, this is, is weird. Like, why do (laughs) y'all do this? There's nothing on that folded up piece of paper. Like what are you doing? Um, he looks really cute in his little cap and gown, though. No. He, he did look adorable. Um, but they did, like, the Pledge of Allegiance, and I was like, okay, normal, all right. Um, and then they did a pledge to the Christian flag, and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, Tony, there's a Christian flag? The fuck is that? I, like, I, I, I've never heard of that. I had no, like, I'd seen the flag before. I'm pretty sure I've seen it, like, in my own church, but... Mm-hmm we've i'd never done that before i and i was just standing there i was like what is this and then they did a pledge to the bible and i yeah pledge of allegiance to the bible and i turned to him and i was like what is happening (laughs) we got in the car and i was like tony i don't know if it's just because i was brought up presbyterian i was like but Lynn, it's very, especially with our congregation, everything, it's very like, come as you are. Like I, in, in college, I used to go and like sit in the balcony and like, in I would go in like a dirty sweatshirt hung over a shit from the <laughs> night before. And my pastor would come up to me and she'd be like, baby, I'm just happy you're here. And I'm like, yeah. oh, right. Like, I love that. Like I'm here for Jesus. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it, it's very, very culty and at, at times. And I do understand that. And it's very like hard for me, but then, um, But then, you know, the way I can compare it to a uh, a thing like this is that when you hear a really good sermon and, you know, it really speaks to you and you're like, God, I, you know, I needed that. Like Mm -hmm. that really speaks to me and it gets you feeling all good, you know, all those good feelings and you want to go out into the world. Mm -hmm. And as they, you know, that's exactly how my, one of our pastors ends his sermons he's like and you know jesus said to whatever go out into the world i don't know i'm usually like halfway out the door by then <laughs> tony and i are trying to like get back to our car so we can so we can go home or depart yeah. or something but um it's like you get all those really good feelings yeah. and you then you know you, like you said you're reinvigorated and like everyone else said it's you know it sucks you back in and you're mm-hmm. with all your people and um and i don't know if y'all have ever seen footage i'm sure you have from all of our videos as well but there are it's it's so 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 culty and i'm very interested to see this year um exactly how culty monations is gonna be oh my god um like yeah i uh it has to be another level because they're struggling so bad i feel like and so 
I don't know. It's always been bad. Their events have always been highly, oh, highly course. entertaining to watch from the outside. But I have I have a bet going with someone that I've been working with that if they mention at the convention being a monate lifer oh. and i told her I, I was like they're going to and she was absolutely like, she, she was like that's she's like that's really crazy and i was like no girl they're going to i was like so if they do and we have like this crazy bet and now like tony and like a bunch of other people are in on it too with the thing we're working on but just so y'all know if you see it in the background oh shit i can't disguise tony can i yeah i can he'll wear a hat he'll look <laughs> different i'll contour his nose um but if you see in the background Someone that looks like me in my brown wig. Aha. Uh -huh. Don't rat me out. Yeah. Okay. Because you will probably see me in the background of some Instagram. I'm going. And yes. I, I figured. And, and honestly, like, I, I have never talked to you about this before, but AJ was like, you should go. And I was like, oh my God, that'd be so scary. Because like, I don't, I don't have a wig, Chelsea. I don't have a wig. I would have to. Well, if, so, <laughs> so, if, so if Tony can't go, because, and because be, before September, I'm, we're, Tony and I are coming to hang out with y'all one weekend. But sure. um, if, if he can't go for whatever reason, which I'm sure he'll probably make up a fucking reason not to go, <laughs> um, then can you, you'll just borrow a wig and I'll pick you up on my way. Okay. I like, literally want to go so bad, but I'm, also terrified of confrontation and i just couldn't and, and not to say that like people know who i am because they probably don't but it's are you like trying my, to fight everybody like no but i just <laughs> want, like, i don't want people to come up to me and be like you look potentially familiar you know oh my god it just it's my worst nightmare but i want to go so bad and experience it because like well, i just do yeah, i don't know I yeah well it. yeah you let me tell you this and my subscribers know as well i get very protective of my friends mm. Like with everything that's been going down and with some people in our community the past few weeks, it's been very hard for me to keep my mouth shut and not just like go off. But I'm being professional and I know my people don't want me to like get involved in shit. So I basically am like, don't talk to me about it. Like I stand where I stand and that's it. And I don't fuck with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I get very protective. So you will be safe with me. <laughs> don't you worry. Thank and <laughs> um and I got you. Uh, some Someone said, let's not uh, religious shame people in the chat. Yeah, don't let people believe what they want to believe as long as they're not hurting anyone else. That's fine. For instance, I consider myself a Christian. I believe in Jesus and I am like 60% gay. Okay, so let's, <laughs> Love it. let's, Love it be, let, let's be nice um, to each other, please. Um, oh, oh, yeah. All you said is all religions are a cult. I mean, there it's a spectrum. Um, we've talked about that before. That cultiness can be on a spectrum, just like I said. You know, I say I'm a Christian, but then there's a fucking pledge to the Bible. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah, no. that's a little. It, it it was a little bit a little bit weird. I feel um, like there's a line, and maybe it got crossed. You know, girl, <laughs> I was looking around. I was like, what? What are you doing <laughs> here? Um, I was very happy to leave. Um, anyways, let's uh keep keep it keep it going. I was just about to get on and my phone overheated because I'm in Phoenix, Arizona and it is hot here. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> so I put it to my swimsuit and we're good. Um, I'm so excited to be here because if I learned anything in Hawaii, it was that we need to be together as Team YL and just grow from each other, learn from each other, be inspired by each other and so I think this call is literally like the most perfect thing ever for the timing of what we all need right now. Um, so I like two second snippet about me. I've been doing Young Living for um, seven years now and I definitely started as an accident. It was not on purpose and it's been the best decision what? that I ever made. Sorry, I'm trying to find a quiet spot. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Is there a okay. Oh, great. Um, Okay, good. Um, so yeah, it's been seven years and it's just been the biggest blessing ever. And we've definitely had our ups and downs, I think like everybody else has. But Hawaii was like such a pivotal moment for at least my business because it was like, okay, that was the that was like the little last nugget that I needed to be like, all right, we are all in this and we're all in it for the right reasons and let's just keep going. Like let's keep plowing through any of the hardships because we can see like the rainbow coming on the other side, like the storms are clearing and we are about to be good. 
Bingo. The storms are clearing. Well, guess what? Hobag. It, um, it is actually the eye of the motherfucking storm. Get back in your cellar. Um, <laughs> but it's exactly what we just said with yeah. the, um, the ups and downs. We need to stick together. We mm-hmm. all needed this. Grow from each other. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the the trip was the pivotal moment, you know, going yeah. on that trip. It like we said, it it reinvigorates them and yeah. it makes you want to, you know, keep going and gets you all hyped and stuff like that's That's so weird. Also, you love ferrets and rodents in general. That's cool. I vibe with that. Um, <laughs> ferrets are cold. How did we get here? <laughs> They, leave it leave it to you and uh another uh karina i believe also has ferrets too she sends me pictures of them sometimes oh my gosh yeah um yeah so it's exactly uh lara pox um oh my god pox 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 <laughs> oh my god you no know, you know what this this is hannah's channel now i'm done i'm no, done i I'm love done. it you would not believe um, the number of times that happens that I have to like edit out. And I've thought about making a blooper reel kind of video with like right. all the tongue twice. Tongue twice. Stop it. <laughs> tongue ties. I thought you were going to say tongue twatters. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't speak. Like, I don't think, I don't think people understand. Like I really can't speak. I struggle. And so there's a lot of bloopers. Anyway, Girl, it's our job to talk. And I'm not. So good at we it. should probably figure this shit out. Yeah, I should probably <laughs> do something about that. But anyway, I agree. Like she just acknowledged the fact that, like, we need we needed this. Yeah. Did you? Are you sure? It was crucial. <laughs> yeah. It and was- I think that that is the language. Like it's like you're expected to go. And I I read this. Uh, I forget which video it was, but it was a horror story that I read of somebody in Arbon, I believe, but they were based in the UK and there was a convention in Vegas and she was doing this, like, um, she had like a final project for her degree that had, she had to do this presentation on this one day that also coincided with the Arbon convention in Vegas. And she got like so much shit for not going. She was like, are you kidding me? I live across wow. the world and I have to be doing this presentation to graduate college i'm not going and and like people were like but you don't understand this is so essential it's so crucial it's so life-changing and she didn't go and like she got shunned for like the rest of her time like all like her upline would not let her live it down basically and i like that's how seriously they take these kinds of events like you should be missing whatever it is you need to graduate weddings birthdays funerals like people have been given shit about missing funerals that's it that's absolutely it's i can't wrap my head around it like it's it's unbelievable how much emphasis is placed on making sure that you attend these things because there's so much brainwashing that goes on like you have to be there to experience it so that you know you stay in the company longer or whatever like i just yeah. can't so so that. they continue to make money off of you and that's Basically. why it's so so messed up you know and i yeah. um i heard heard you say a few times as well wiggum i just heard your balls slap that's <laughs> disgusting um the the whole like I, i've heard you so, uh, like focus more on like motive which is great and i and oh. i love talking about that so much like it's one of my favorite aspects of mlms to talk about and manipulation yeah because it always comes back to what is their motive their motive exactly. is to make money off of you and that's exactly. it like yeah just then it's it's so important to consider the source and when whenever people say um you know Oh, well, I'm going to listen to my upline. Like, why would I listen to you? Like, you're a hater. And I that's that is... when I actually started, you know, talking about, I feel like that's kind of like where all of us kind of start talking about the motive when yes. we have those conversations and it's like, think about it. What yeah. is my motive for sharing this information and trying to, you know, essentially not convince you to get out of the cult, but just like convince you to at least see what is happening? Am I going to make money by you staying in? No. Am I going to make money by you staying out? No. No. Yeah. It does not make a single difference. Like it doesn't make one ounce of a difference. If you join an MLM, quit an MLM, like it it makes no difference, but it does to the person who's trying to recruit you. Right. So 
you always have to consider like, what does, what does the source of your information have to lose? Like for the person who's trying to recruit you, that's a lot that they're losing if they don't get you to join or if they, if you quit, but oh my gosh, if it's somebody who's trying to present you with just like factual information about the company, yeah, they're considered a hater. They're considered Mm -hmm. someone on the outside, the anti side, you shouldn't listen to them, but yeah, it makes exactly zero difference to me in my personal life if you choose to join an MLM or not. So, well, yeah, I mean, per- personal or um, professional. Uh, this right. person said this regarding our um, our getting like tripped up on our words. Oh. I would just like this. I would just like to say um, I've been a dumb bitch since like the womb. So it's definitely <laughs> not alcohol. I, I yeah. honestly, for myself, I feel like it, I do better actually. Same like, I, have I, a little, and I have a little bit of alcohol. Like, girl. I'm bit more fluid. Honest to God. Like, absolutely. Case, apparently. I am I my, my, my comedic but. timing, my wit, like everything mm. is so much on the ball. You know what? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <to> that. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to have to take an Uber to dinner. It's fine. Drink responsibly. Yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, used to go to conventions for work, but got reimbursed. Exactly. It's a lot different when, um, when, you know, you are going to these things for work, for instance, even <laughs> the funny thing is, is that if, if, if I do go to Monations, I'm being paid to be there. Mm. I'm actually one of the only people in that building that would be being paid, not by Monate, but being paid to be there so it's very it's it's, it that's just ironic um but yeah they're they're not paid to be there they pay to go um which yeah it's just fucking crazy um then a two full paid weeks pay for learning new instruments that's nice damn because it's a difference between personal and professional development right Mm -hmm. being in an mlm is not a job you don't have an employer they don't care about your professional skills basically Mm -hmm. so it's all framed like personal development but yeah when you're working a typical job typical nine to five corporate dreaded hellhole yeah then you're yeah there is a an interest in making sure that your your skills are up to the profession standard or whatever you know this can look plenty of different ways but yeah well if you're in a professional job they're going to pay for you to go and learn these skills yeah, That's absolutely. Because they're they're not trying to, you're not the customer. They're trying to make it so that you are doing better at your job, um, you know, so that you can network, so that you can make more connections, so that you can get more sales, so that you can, you know, become a better employee for them. Yeah. And in turn, yeah, make them more money so that you're more of an asset to them. Yeah. With right. MLM reps, it's so that you're more of a customer yes. to them, which is extra, um, extra fooked up um yeah. but let's continue also she's by the pool and in a meeting that sounds fucking miserable okay, I, would I, went, I went to the beach yesterday and there was a girl she brought like her own little lounger chair and she was on her macbook and i and i was like what mlm machine i have to know like awesome. what are you doing there there are a there's a good amount of them by you like oh kind of over there and then there's um, obviously Tampa is just completely overrun with them. Yeah. And there was one of them by the pool and she was doing a, she was on a Zoom call and me and Tony were on the other side of the pool and she was in Monet and he looked at me and he's like, should we just go stand right behind her? Oh my gosh. And, I, and he was like, God, what if you got the recording to that Zoom? Like oh you knew that you had someone recording it and me and you just went and stood in the background Oh, that and would they be got hard. that. And I was yeah. like, I the content king over there. I was like, there's no way I could, I could do that right now. Also, I don't want to, I'm, it's my day off. Right. Um, right. Like I am trying to relax. And yeah. Yeah, I, I was just thought that was so funny. Cause I was drinking wine on the beach, just completely chilling out. And yeah, I, who knows if she was in an MLM or not. I don't know, but it was kind of funny. Like boss babes really grinding over there. Girl time freedom. It'll get you. Yeah. Um, yeah. F- photo bomb. Um, alrighty. Let's keep it going. So that was really exciting to have that moment. Um, But what I wanted to share really quick from like some of the main nuggets that I got from the trip was 
you guys like if you have ever like followed multiple diamonds you will know that everybody is so radically different from each other there's it's very random to meet a diamond and you're like oh you're just like the next one like i feel like everybody is so different and everybody runs their business and grows their business so differently which is the coolest part to really recognize that there's no right or wrong way to do this and if you have a if you have somebody that's trying to tell you you're doing it right or wrong like just don't even listen to them every single leader that i talk to like nobody did it the same. Nobody learned the same. Nobody grew the same. Yes. Yeah, some people there were influencers and they signed up hundreds of people. There's other people there that are like, I actually haven't enrolled somebody in like six months. I'm trying, but it hasn't happened. And that was like the most refreshing thing to hear is that we can all do this in our own unique way. And I don't think that other jobs, you can do that. Like when you go into corporate America, if you've never experienced that, it is very structured. It is like, if you don't do it this way, if you don't follow our A, B, and C, then you're wrong. Like you're cut out, you're fired, you're whatever. And we are encouraged to be unique in this. We're encouraged to be creative and have our own vision, our own path for it. And we're rewarded in that. And that is like, Tell me you've never worked for a like a good, there are not good corporate companies out there, but tell me you've never worked for a corporate company yeah. without telling me. Like you're- I think- like, what, I feel like what's it's, the hell it's even saying? I feel like it's just the overgeneralization, right? Like there's this – so, okay. I feel like uh, – I don't want to – me saying this next thing might be an overgeneralization, but I do feel like there is kind of this wave of millennials who join MLMs who really have never worked a corporate job or have never yeah. had a traditional, normal, whatever that looks like, right? Right professional level job and they're made to believe that it's this one thing that it it sometimes can be but not always and so it's really hilarious to kind of hear them hear their ex what am I trying to say hear her interpretation of what she thinks Mm -hmm. a corporate nine-to-five job is when maybe she hasn't even worked one I don't know I don't know who she is or what her situation is but it's it's very fascinating that they have this one black and white image of what nine to fives are and that's what they perpetuate because they want you to fear them you want them you want people yeah. to think that they're the worst thing to ever happen to you and that this is the only alternative and this is the bright side of things kind of thing come um, absolutely and the funny thing is is that most most jobs like that that i've worked weren't actually nine to five so yeah. it's funny that they say it like that um and i understand that's just a um uh said do you mean gen z millennials at this point yeah either yeah i I was gonna say that as well it's i feel like it's a little bit more of gen z right Um, i I mean i don't even know what i am i think i'm right on the edge and so i'm thinking of people my age 25 i feel like people my age whatever i am gen z i guess yeah i think you are gen z okay then gen z sorry clarification for that then yes but young young people who are fresh out of college, never went to college. Hey, there's no one right path. Totally fine. But I just feel like they're the people that I see talking about what they think a corporate job is have never personally been there, done that. Exactly. And a a lot of them nowadays, you can work from home, you can work or remotely or however you want to phrase it. And um, it's, it's interesting just to hear people say, like, just really demonize it when it's like, like think about what she just said like they tell you you can't do this and you can't do that and it's like well and how she just phrased it it makes it sound like she's saying like you can't be your own person and it's like actually you can you just have to do what is in your job requirement and you know hit your metrics and your quotas and do your job responsibilities Mm -hmm. because that's why you're getting paid so it's not like you can't be your own person yeah absolutely be be yourself but do what you're supposed to do. Like you're not just gonna be like, yeah, but you're not gonna just be a, a robot. I mean, typically most companies don't want you to be, you know, they want mm-hmm. you to, at least in sales, you know, thrive and um, make it, you know, make the script work on your own and, you know, have an outline and especially if you're actually good at sales, but it's just really interesting to hear, hear them. And it's just like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like it's, it's really annoying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the trip that she's talking about was the top leaders in um, in Young Living got to go to Hawaii, and she was talking about 
Um, some of them were influencers. And I'm pretty sure the one that she's talking about is Erin uh, Williams. She's a YouTuber. She started out in reality television. Um, she went pretty, I don't want to say viral, but gained a lot of following <laughs> for essentially like the racist comments that she made in, oh. um, in like her microaggressions on Big Brother when she was on that one. Oh. Um, and she's a, a family vlogger, a mommy vlogger. She's taken her kids not completely off of her channel, but she doesn't show them as much as she used to, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, so she is at the top of Young Living and gets so many people to enroll because she's so popular on um, on YouTube and on Instagram. And it's really, it's extra fucked up because people will literally sign up because they think they're going to like be on a team call with her. And it's like, no, oh. you're not. That's it's like this works. weird like popularity like i've there's like isn't there like a i forget where she's from but there's some i want to say dominican reality star i don't remember somebody an actress in monate okay she's someone famous in a different country i don't know what country she's from but um it's like that kind of complex like if someone's famous or an influencer or someone with a big following people tend to gravitate towards that because they're trying to get close to that person. It's like mm -hmm. when celebrities start promoting MLMs, it's this weird, like, Oh, I can be on their team. I can yeah, be on a Zoom call with them. Kind sometimes of weird. Sometimes what will happen is uh, like, for instance, with black China, she mm. joined Monet, but what happened was um, allegedly, but I, I know that this happened, but alleged it was alleged to me from a good source um, that the person who recruited her essentially paid her like for a sponsored post to promote oh. it. And then whoever signed up under black China was just sent over to that upline. Oh and then that upline got everyone. Um, Perfect. but she, cause black China only, if you looked, she only made it to, um, the second rank in Monate. Wow. So yeah. clearly she only had like four, what four or five people under her yeah. and didn't make it to you know that third rank so clear like where did all those people go mm -hmm. um but a lot of times that's what uh what they'll do and it's really 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 unfortunate um yeah. but let's continue the most beautiful blessing ever of this um another little nugget if you guys know Brooke christian she christian i always say her last name wrong Anyways, nesting well, nesting with grace. She's incredible. She's like a insane person in her enrollments. But she said, and I was like, I'm going to start doing this because I'm all about practical tips. What can I implement right away with my team? And she's like, I reward those most who place the biggest orders and that show up and like are enrolling and like really truly working the business. She said that she, whatever the month promo is, say it's, you know, say the highest PV promo is 300 for that month or it's 400 for that month. She, for her personally enrolled people, will send them out gifts every month if they're placing above that PV promo. They're clearly not doing it just to reach the promo. They're doing it because they are like here for the lifestyle change. They're here to ra radically change their family's health. And so she wants to bless them with some sort of gift, whether it be a small roller or something. It doesn't have to be big. It can even... Okay. Um, a lot of sales companies do that as well for their top performers. If you're uh, like, for instance, the company, I'm not going to say the name of it because I'm, I might eventually go back to working there. Um, but the company that I worked for previously, they, they would do that. And a lot of companies will give, you know, presents or gifts or incentives to their top salespeople, or mm -hmm. even just on a certain team. Sometimes you'll get, you know, an extra PTO day or, you know, $500 or, um, the last place I worked, the top person at the top of the leaderboard for the whole month, if, you know, not if you could maintain that, but like you, you know, do sales, whatever by the month. And then the top person, um, you, there's, uh, one, one time you got a TV, there was an iPad, there was, um, like for instance, I got an iPad one time and I just gave it as a gift to someone. Cause I was like, I don't need it. Meanwhile, I literally just fucking bought an iPad, but at the time I didn't need it. So yeah, I gave it away. Um, or, you know, the top person got a thousand dollars every month. And then the, the two people under that got 500 and it's like, yeah, other companies do that. And guess what? You have typically a set pay or you are guaranteed pay. And it's just based off of you, not your downline, not any other people. So it's just crazy. They're like, nowhere else does this. You don't have this opportunity. And it's like, yeah, you could 
and you could have health insurance. Yeah. I think they frame it a lot. Like we have all these benefits that you can't possibly get anywhere else. Like that's the narrative, mm -hmm. right? But it's not always the case. So especially what yeah. you kind of said previously about working from home opportunities, obviously the climate we're in right now, like things are changing. A lot of employers are giving more work from home opportunities. My husband's in the military. He works from home, you know, like yeah. it's crazy. So it, I think that times are changing in that sense. And I feel like pretty soon they're not going to be able to rely so much on the work from home aspect of it. There are so many options for you mm -hmm. to be able to work from home that are not an MLM. And just like you said, yeah. like if you want to be benefited monetarily or through gifts or whatever, through your hard work, there's other options. MLM is not always the way. So it's kind exactly. of the same. Well, and she's even saying like, it's not the company giving out those incentives. It's the upline. Right. So that's even more money that the yeah. upline is spending. And yeah. sure, that's a technically that's a business expense for mm -hmm. the the upline, because I mean, the, the people she's talking about are at the very top. Essentially, they have their, you know, their LLC set up as an S corporation and, you know, they have a, a it's all separate. Right. And so typically, yes, they will have, you know, all these things as business expenses, whatever. But it's like that takes even more away from them. So they're profiting even less, mm -hmm. but they're putting it back into their down, not downline. I don't know why I'm doing that. It is their downline. They're putting it back into their downline to try to make more money. But it's like, you're spending so much more to try to get your people to work more. And it's, it's funny that she said she rewards those who sell the most and recruit the most. It's like, okay, so the people who are doing the best, like obviously yeah. those are the people you would reward. Like, why are you saying it? Like, it's such a crazy concept of like, yeah, <laughs> she, she, her top performer is getting a, a, a reward. Mm -hmm. It's, it's funny. Cause like people in sales would be like, well, yeah, no shit. But mm -hmm. I guess like the people who haven't been in that type of environment would just be like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that's what you should do. And mm -hmm. it's like, that that's a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let my cat in the room. He's being annoyed. Oh my annoyed. God, do it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. It looks like we only have like two more minutes, I think, of this girl talking. And then we go to Lauren, Lauren Peter. Okay. Seen well nesting with Grace. She's incredible. She's like a insane person in her enrollments but she said i was like i'm gonna start doing this because i'm all about practical tips what can i implement in the business she said that she, it does not have to be money out of your pockets minus the like what 35 cents for the postcard stamp so i thought that that was so so genius of like hi hey, yeah let's like give pats on the back to the people that are working hard i'm sorry sir would you like to say something Cooper's joined the party, everyone. Hi, Coop. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's such a good boy. Um, I see a booty, a little yeah. starfish. Yeah. Um, it's funny that she just said, like, it only costs, you know, the stamp mm -hmm. to, to, to send, like, a thank you card. And it's like, no, it doesn't. Like, stationary and thank you cards are expensive. Like, I... <laughs> I, I I have I have um a bunch of them like a set of them coming. It's so cute for my channel members. Um, I'm sending out like like I have like a spreadsheet of like my like fun mail, a not fan mail, fun mail, um, addresses and stuff. And so I'm gonna send them out, and all the um all the ones I have now are gonna have lemons on them. Are gonna be so cute when they come. Cute. I love um, that. That's, it's not expensive, but yeah, it is money out of your own pocket. Otherwise, what what are you putting? what are you putting the stamp on? What are like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah, it's so I, strange. It is so creepy how he is like petting and caressing your head with his tail. I know. I just like constantly have a butt in my face all, all the time, all the time. I mean, same, same with Wiggum. My people know Wiggum tries to get up here. Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, Jennifer said, Cooper, my boyfriend. Oh, Cooper. Uh, how, how old is your kitty? Um, they will be, Three, I have two of them, they're brothers, and they'll be three in September, September 4th. Love that for them. Yeah. Um, how do we get on the fun mail list? Uh, B, if you 
I forgot how I did it last time. Um, you, you can just email me if you want. And then in the, um, or no, I guess I should make it to where it's just for channel members. I'll, uh, I'll put a thing in my community tab just for channel members and I'll like, I'll tell you what to do from there essentially. Anyways. Uh, all right. Let's, um, let's keep going that are showing up and let's show them that like we totally are thankful for that and we're grateful for that for them showing up whether it be in their business and they're enrolling tons or they're showing up or placing big orders because they just want to change their lifestyle so those are my two nuggets i know everybody has such good information i wait she just said she put, putting in big orders because they want to change their life so that means that they're ordering stuff so you're thanking your downline for being your a customer I I can't follow it. I don't know. I can't stop looking at him. He's so I, cute. Very distracting, everybody. I apologize. But he's just the best. He's the snuggly one. Zeke is the like s like crazy loud one. Cooper's the sweet snuggly one. I love that. Um, I don't know how he lasted so long with like not being in your office because Wiggum would bust through that door oh yeah i yeah. did not have him in here he's yes. they're personally a... offended if they're not able to be in the same room it's i can't have a moment to myself ever oh never never i walked in tony's man cave yesterday and i was like tony there's something following me and i kept <laughs> staring at him and he's like don't move it's right behind you <laughs> and wiggum was just like what are y'all talking about yeah why are we not sad, cuddling really. like no. mom get back on the couch um, all right. Uh, most people have cameras on. That's uh, in that kind of Khaleesi. They're so, so good. They forced to show face. I think they are. I think they're encouraged to turn on their cameras. And I think it's sometimes I think it's so that they can see like that the person one is present, but then two, that it's not like a, so it's not us <laughs> essentially. Yeah. So it's not, yeah. not us. Yeah. Um, grabbing you for any future children you have for putting up <laughs> your butthole in the face, probably. Or just no privacy. Both. That's, that's a better. Yeah, that's probably what they meant. <laughs> Why am I always talking about buttholes? I'm really sorry, guys. Top people in the company. I was actually shocked to experience some serious imposter syndrome. So like here I am as a gold or maybe not even a gold if I'm being real. Um, a lot of us have had an interesting few years with all the changes that have happened, the craziness in the world. We have lost leaders. Our team has been through some craziness in just this year alone. And while it's been really hard, um, it was actually really amazing for us to be able to kind of hone in on where we were at in our business and more importantly, why, how we got there. Like we kind of like lost sight of why we started in the first place and like the work that needed to be done to move the needle forward. Um, so through lots of work and mindset shift, we were able to take radical personal ownership of our results and work on that collectively as a team. So because of all this work. she's de She definitely just read that off of somewhere, you know. <laughs> You know she didn't just say that on her own. Radical leadership. Like, girl, what? You just said, like, four high-value Scrabble words in a row. Yes. Yeah. No, ma'am. I just feel like it's – when I watch these calls sometimes, I just feel like it's this continuous string of, like, Pinterest quotes. That's how I genuinely mm -hmm. feel. Like, it's just one yeah. cliche after another. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it it definitely it definitely isn't a lot of times it looks like they because sometimes they'll have like their camera or whatever set up and then yeah. they'll have like their script right here yeah. or like even on their screen as well but even like i like i'm looking at my camera right now but uh, typically during this call i'm looking at hannah's beautiful face because who wouldn't want to look at that yeah. um and you know i'm talking to her right so i'm looking right. down here instead of up there so they might even have like a script on their computer or something. And yeah. it's so funny because then it looks like they're looking past you. Mm. And I always picture like their upline standing with cue cards <laughs> and just like dropping one after another. Yes. And then like their other upline just like standing there with like 
not like not even like a gun but something more comical like like a fucking bone arrow or something <laughs> and just or like a baseball bat i don't know and just like standing there like threatening them and like you better read this you better read all this yeah we gotta all- come back from what we've lost yeah, it just all feels so, like, inauthentic and regurgitated from, like, bits and pieces that they've taken from other things and just thrown them together because they sound kind of nice. And mm-hmm. they're just hoping that no one thinks about them too hard. <laughs> yes. Um, Melissa said the person, the upline is standing there with Perfect. a water balloon launcher. Yes. <laughs> with just yes, a exactly. fucking slingshot ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. I- um, uh, Lex, it's uh, Young Living. All right. I feel like as I was in Hawaii, I was able to kind of recognize this huge like comparison game that I was doing. Um, Like in my head when I first got there, I was like, oh my gosh, like I should be further along, like comparing to the people who I was meeting and talking to for the first time. Um, While at the same time, realizing that I had been pushing off, taking action to move my business forward. So maybe you can relate to having thoughts like it'll be easier when I'm X rank, like when I'm diamond, it'll be easier to like bring people into this business. When I have X number of followers on Instagram, it'll be easier to enroll or I'll feel more confident making a business offer when my check is X dollars a month. I am just staring at this lady's titty, um, the top middle. She has been walk. Yeah. All right. Everyone do the head. Tilt. <laughs> She has just been, she's on her hot girl walk and she's just going, but she has her phone down. And so I'm just seeing titty. I can't say I've noticed, but now I will not be able to unsee it. Now that's all you're going to see. Sometimes there's people like fucking like eating noodles super close to the camera. And it's like, girl, step back. Yeah. It's, it's so I, that's one of my favorite things to do is just scan the screen and see what people are up to. Well, you we have just, what people are doing. We have an empty room on um the second row from the bottom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that that room's been empty this whole time. <laughs> and then the, <laughs> this room, camera was on. So yeah, no, she she was there, and then what is that person doing? Yeah, no, the, and then the one next to it, the one next to it's empty as well. Wow. They they tricked the system. Um, the lady's second row, first one, she has the same plant as you. Oh, look at that plant twins. Yeah. I'm actually <laughs> I I I have that one in our front room as well. Um yeah, so all right. Um, like I I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that I've had those thoughts. So I am here to burst that bubble because having these conversations with the top leaders in this company, you guys, the obstacles, the mindset work, the time management problems, the needing for systems, they do not magically go away when you hit the rink of diamond. Like do that work today. Step into your role as the rink and the check and whatever. I don't think what she, and I can tell you just had the same thought. I don't think she, she realizes what she just said yeah because she just said you're gonna have all those same problems at the very top level yeah we all deal with the same exact problems and it's all the same shit essentially Mm -hmm. like it's you're still gonna have a hard time doing all of this because it's not it's not attainable it's definitely not sustainable and it's not a good business model and it's essentially bullshit yeah i i the way I think about it is like, you never really get what you were promised. Like there really never is the time freedom, the financial freedom, the whatever at the top. Like it's yeah, maybe the work changes a little bit. Maybe you're not actively recruiting as much, but now a lot of your work is going into keeping the people you already have, like yes. leading, leading, leading calls like this or things like that. Like it never, at least from what I've seen, it doesn't appear that it gets any easier. The work changes a little bit. But it's you never truly get what you thought you were going to get at the top. And it's such a like it's a house of cards, too. I mean, how can you relax? How can you enjoy the fruits of your labor and like actually have time freedom or financial freedom if you're so focused on like if my team crumbles, I have nothing, you know, you never you don't just magically get to the top and be able to stay there. You know, I guess that's what I'm trying to say, but 
have you um i've heard and i don't know if you've experienced this but i've i've heard people describe like that kind of at like you know them constantly chasing this rank and this rank and it's going to be better once i get to this rank and i'll be making more money at this time have you experienced people saying like oh well it's just like youtube you know you're chasing oh like, milestone and stuff like that yes i've heard i've heard people make that argument before somebody actually sent me they emailed me this YouTube video and it was a guy, it was like a five minute YouTube video. And he was making the argument that being on YouTube is the same thing as being in an MLM. And it was so fascinating to oh like God, try and hear him spin it that way. That's hilarious. But I mean, I think there's a difference between having goals yeah. and also, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it is different because you can have goals in your life, whatever they may be. But when those goals are relying on other people doing well and other people performing at a certain level, I feel like that's kind of the difference in this situation. Yeah. Because I, I always say like, you can't, you can't just be successful in an MLM by yourself. It's not no. based on you and your own hard work. You have to make sure that the people under you and on your team they're also working to the level that you need. So I don't know. It's, it's hard to be like self-motivated and hitting your goals. And I think it's kind of almost comical when people say like, oh, I have the goal of hitting this much in volume this month or selling this much or recruiting this many people. Because in my head, I'm like, it's not up to you. You can't make people buy stuff. You can't make people join your team or stay on your yeah. team. You can do the best you can. You can you can manipulate a little bit to increase those chances, but it's it, it, your goals aren't up to you kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't know. It's interesting in that way. No, I, I completely agree with that. And then also um, I think it's I think it's completely understandable though as well because like and I can't speak for all YouTubers, obviously, but for myself, I mean, I, I, I know that, yes, once I hit, you know, 100,000 subscribers, it, it's not like the work stops there or I'm going to work less. I mean, I'm hopefully I'll get to the point where, you know, I, I can only post, you know, two videos a week and like do one live stream. Like, hopefully I will eventually get there. But that's essentially just not I don't see myself doing that. I see myself continuing to put out, you know, three to four videos a week and, you know, doing two or three live streams or, you know, one, one like this as well. And it, I, I understand I'm still going to have those problems or essentially may, maybe even more because your audience is bigger. And because, you know, the larger your channel gets, the more people shit talk you or the more, you know, mm -hmm. negative comments you get or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So I think that's, um, very that's an aspect that's different but then also a lot of the times in mlms they're like oh well once i hit this i'll have that time freedom i'll have the promise of this once i get there but with us it's like no i'm it's not like i get to 100,000 500,000 a million subscribers then i stop no 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 you keep going you like this is your job we understand this is a job and you just keep going yeah hopefully you know by 40, you know, I, I won't be doing this anymore. And I'll have, you know, maybe just the podcast or maybe put out like one video of like one big video, like a week or a month or something. But it's just funny how they see it. Mm -hmm. They, the, the overgeneralization, they, um, it, it's very, <laughs> very interesting. Um, two <laughs> videos a week. I ain't ready. I know I'm, I'm, I, I don't even want to do that. Right. I'm, I'm like, yeah. Oh God, only, <laughs> only two. I, it's, it's just so easy right now for me to put out um, put out so many. Uh, wait, oh my God, is Soul Cycle a a pie scheme? Like a circle? Um, a pyramid scheme? Soul Cycle is not a pyramid scheme. Um, you recruited for a job that had. I'm very confused. I'll look into that. Mm -hmm. um, you'll probably have to email me about it because in 30 minutes I'll forget. Yeah, I'm um, the same way. Yeah, oh girl. Melissa. I can't with you. Okay. Whatever it is that you want to do, do that right now and you will see a massive shift in your business. Um, no matter what the stories in your head are, 
we are competent leaders. We are able to bring people into this business because we have what no one else has. We have an incredible company that leads from the heart with people over profits, hands freaking down. Like we get to see this every time you step foot onto a farm. No, 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 (laughs) ma'am. Sorry. Now, when you say people over profits. Yeah, what do do you, what exactly do you mean? Because. Because Lauren, the people are the profits. She's about to talk about a farm. I can't wait. (laughs) This was by far the most magical farm on the planet. Like I've only been to two, but hopefully more soon. But it was so incredible to just see. I'm pretty sure like nurseries are more magical than, you know. I, she, I wonder if she's talking about like, cause Young Living does have like lavender fields and things like that, that sometimes they'll take their top people to. And I've seen pictures. It's just dismal. Like it's so not something to be excited about, but yet everyone feels like it's just such a privilege to go to the place that they grow the Young Living oils. It's just, I don't know. That is so... Oh my God. Like how I've seen pictures. They're, they're not good. No. They don't, it's not like the beautiful, like it, no. it's not the, the, the computer screensaver that you would think. No, maybe, maybe like sometimes of the year, maybe in some seasons, but there, there was one, um, somebody sent me something of a girl being really excited about being able to go to the young living lavender field. And she made all these reels about it and stuff. And when you look at the pictures on the Young Living website, they're beautiful, right? Of course. So gorgeous. Lush purple, like sunbeams, like beautiful. The pictures this girl was posting, literal tumbleweeds. Like it looked like a desert with little brown tufts in the ground. And she was like, this is the most magical experience. And like she was like showing so much gratitude towards being there. And that's fine. That's cool. But. It was sort of like uh, what you ordered versus what you got kind of situation yeah. where like this is not what we expected. And I don't know. That is – That was so funny. embarrassing. I did a uh, – a, but when I lived in um, Utah when I was at a mm-hmm. uh, residential residential treatment facility or residential mm-hmm. treatment center, um, we, we did like 5Ks a lot. And sure. most of us that were on like the 5K team, we hated running. But the only reason we did it was because we like got to like go off campus. And otherwise you like, you like never got to do that. So we were like, yeah. hell yeah, we'll go running. Yeah. <laughs> like that's mm-hmm. how desperate we were to yeah. like go do, go do something. It's- right. You could not catch me doing that now, but um, <laughs> we would run a 5k almost. Uh, it was like every other day, and then we would like train for um, the run. To my favorite one we ever did, it was like the something lavender Sp- Springville lavender run, or I'm lap something, some city, and then uh, in Utah, and then lavender run. And we part of it was through like a field, and it was the most beautiful thing ever. What month was that? I remember? have no idea. My okay. entire life is a blur when I was in Utah, <laughs> uh, which is ironic because I was the most sober I've ever been in my life when I was there. Um, yeah. Uh, key lime pie for the win as a Floridian. That is um, our like state like dish, I guess, other than oranges, but like the, the key lime pie is disgusting. Um, <gasps> and I, I know. Oh, I'm very sorry, girl. Okay. And I'm born and raised here too. Okay. I'm allowed to it's say fine. that. I, there are some that I've come across that I'm like, that's not a good one. You know, it has to, it, I'm a very particular person about it, but. There's a, there's a place here in Tampa that has like absolutely the best. So when I'm going to, Tony and I are going to have to bring like a Yeti cooler and I'm going to have to bring you like a bunch <laughs> of shit from over here when I, uh, when I go over there. Um, all right. So, you know what, let's see what she has to say. And then we're going to like skip, like skip a little bit. Okay. Cause I only have. I don't know where my friend is, but she's once she gets here, I'm gonna like have to go to dinner. But let's oh my god, my favorite. Hi, Brennan Ryan Sneed. Thank you so much for the super chat. I love you so much. Can you tell it's one of my favorite subscribers? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love all of you equally. <laughs> but Brennan Ryan Sneed, I love you extra. He's amazing. He I was like super depressed for a while and an email that he sent me like. I had me even more in tears, but it like helped me get out of the like depressive. Oh, that I was I love in. That. Yeah. 
He's amazing. All right. I'm ready for, um, oh my, is he giving you hugs? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wiggum is laying right behind me. I don't know if some of y'all could see him when I was petting his head. But he, yes. really wanted, yes. he really wanted to be seen. Um, all right. What this company does. Anyways, my call to action for you all, since I have only a short amount of time here, is to stop putting off taking action um, and seeing massive results in your business until tomorrow and step into your role as your future diamond leader. Anyways, <laughs> find me on Instagram. Recruit as many people as you can right now. Buy as much as you can right now. That's it. That's I. We could shorten this to like a five second call. Hey, recruit more people. Oh. Buy. I literally say that. I've said that exact sentence before, Chelsea. I'm not even kidding. Like yeah. we could cut all of this. Like, can you move your butt? Excuse you. Rude. Like all you need to know. Hello. <clears throat> be the person that recruits the most. Okay. Bye. Like that's the secret. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's all this other fluff that like, we don't need it. And like, it, it, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. That's not, but they, but they do need it because it makes it brainwashes people and it makes yes. people. Yes. It makes In people... the spirit of manipulation. It is yes. required. Yes. It makes them want to stay in longer and be in longer. And it's absolute, absolute bullshit. Yes. I say this all the time. This could have been an email. Yes. <laughs> I've, said, I've said so many times, like when I was in sales, I would be in a meeting and I'd just be sitting there like, oh my God. Y'all like, took me off the phone for this. Like y'all made me reschedule a, a one of my, one of my consultations where I know I was going to sell it. And like, I'm missing out on leads and I'm like, I yeah. this could have been a fucking email. Like I don't yeah. need this yet. Yeah. Absolutely bonkers. But the thing is, is that they don't, they don't recruit salespeople they mm -hmm. recruit people who are not saying salespeople aren't desperate that's the best type of salesperson um <laughs> someone who's confident and desperate and wants money that a money hungry salesperson that's the best type of salesperson because they know mm -hmm. what they want um and obviously someone who's good at overcoming objections and knows that not everyone should be sold and um someone who is you know personable and uh sympathetic and all that anyways so but, that, but that's not who they're recruiting though they're not recruiting no. salespeople because most salespeople know that this is bullshit and they know their value and they're like, wait, you're what? You're not going to actually pay me for selling a product? Then no, mm -hmm. goodbye. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not yeah. doing that. Yeah. It's absolutely, absolutely bullshit. That belongs in the spam folder. You're right, girlfriend. You are absolutely, <laughs> absolutely right. I'd love to chat more than three minutes about this with you, but I feel like the um, perspective of someone who is not yet a diamond was valuable. And I hope that was helpful. Um, who is next? I should have checked the calendar. Somebody it's probably knows. <laughs> it's me. Yay. Thanks, Lauren. Okay, you guys, I'm Carissa. Uh, Carissa Emiko and radandwell.co on Instagram. I've hit platinum a few times and I'm currently a gold rank, um, but I got to go to Diamond Retreat like Lauren because my friend and upline Sarah. Who's she's hit diamond a few times and now she's gold rank. Yeah, I, th I think she said platinum or something, but yeah. So, so what? I, I'm not familiar with the order of the ranks, but I'm assuming that means like I hit this, but now I'm falling here, kind of thing. Like yeah. I've gotten there, but couldn't stay there, and that's a red flag. <laughs> that's embarrassing. I'm gonna look that up right now. What's the order? Yeah, the I just can't even stand the names of them. Diamond unicorn penis. Oh, it's insane. Um, what's that? Oh, Senegence. Senegence has the worst I've ever seen. They're like Royal Crown Princess is literally a name of the rank. I cannot. That is, that is more offensive than how drying their lipstick is. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Platinum is the rank right above gold. So she's made it there, but hasn't been able to stay. That's right. And then diamond, and then diamond is above platinum. Um, yes, diamond is the one right above platinum. And then there's crown diamond, royal crown diamond is the top. So, Jesus. so gold is only halfway up the compensation plan. Yeah. Hi, Great. Justine. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, we love you too. And okay. That's interesting. Cause the girl right before her was like, I thought it'd be interesting to hear from someone who's not at the top of the company which she was talking about herself. And then there's someone else talking who's like, I've been demoted three times. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Like, 
Oh yeah. yeah weird. <laughs> Melissa said weird flex. It like, is. It is like, it's, I don't know. I just feel like I always watch these calls trying to think from the, the mindset of someone who is trying to make it work. Like I'm trying to picture myself as someone who is in the company. And then I'm listening to this being like, wait, you made it to that rank, but you couldn't hold it. Like, that's interesting. That's not good. Like, what does that say about this opportunity? Right. And, and it, that's the sad reality though, that happens all the time. It's just not very often that people admit it openly. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> like how she, how she said it, she, sir, what are you doing? Oh, he's fighting with himself again. Um, it's he's literally snarling. Um, it's interesting because like how she said it, it kind of sounded like she was trying to flex about it. Like, well, yeah. I've made it there twice. It's like yeah. well, look how attainable it is. And it's like, well, ma'am, clearly it's not because mm -hmm. you've been demoted three times. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. Yikes. Okay. Um, if you're a business owner, why are you constantly demoting yeah. yourself? exactly it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about like your goals and things like that you can have a goal for yourself but if you yourself can't achieve that goal you you're relying on other people like yes yeah. you are going to get demoted if if the other people don't hit their goals like how scary is that who exactly in that situation i don't want to be reliant upon anybody for no. the paycheck like exactly and like yeah we're to like we're reliant on like views, but realistically, you know, we're, we're building an audience and but we're not more... reliant on other people to get views too. Like exactly. that's, that's the argument yeah. with the whole like MLMs versus YouTube kind of thing. It's like, yeah, yes, technically we are reliant people, Chelsea, like we are reliant on people watching our videos. Absolutely. But we don't also need those people to make their own channel and to also get views, you know, and it, yeah, we don't, just... we don't need them to work. We're not reliant on the work of other people correct yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very interesting people. argument that yeah yeah it's a very illogical and irrational argument but then also like the it's just the hoops that they jump through and then even if we even said that like then what would they say they would just go to another and the like the straw man argument it's like okay well i that's not the conversation we're having like we're having uh -huh. this conversation yeah it's just, you know sandwich a hot dog between the bun before it is a sandwich Perfect. oh my gosh this is like is the is cereal soup situation okay. how absolutely how dare you i'm not saying i believe that but that is an argument also someone was asking the other day does a straw have one hole or two didn't i put it on my instagram story okay so i was about to say that like, it's, that yeah. sounds like something jessica hickson would, would yes say. it does <laughs> but <laughs> yeah it's some of some of the crazy shit she would put on her and I know she's the I know. queen of Instagram story engagement. I, I love God. her. I love she's her. She's the best. And my response to that was a it has um it has one it has one hole in it, but a hole has an opening and it it, it has an opening on both sides. That's what a like mm -hmm. someone just, said someone said to me, sorry to be graphic, but they were like if your mouth is technically connected to your butt, it, does that mean that your body has only one hole? I hate this example, but I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, would you argue that your butt and your mouth are two different holes? Because if yes, then a straw has two holes. I, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, okay, okay. I see where you're coming from. I have not, I have Why not would you do this on this argument yet, but. And then someone else was like, if you take a piece of paper and you roll it, does that mean the piece of paper has holes? So does, does a straw have any holes at all? I don't know. I can't. I have no answers. But this is such good, like, dinner party yes. topic. Yeah. Or and the person, the person who sent that to me was like, this is our friend group's ultimate conversation piece like because there's two sides of it and people get really defensive about if a straw has one hole or two and so that's why she submitted that to the little question box thing i had she was like this gets people so angry and fired up about this so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take tony's phone and i'm gonna send that question to his like most of the guy most guys have like a group chat typically mm -hmm. if 
they play video games. It's their best friends that they play video games with. Mm -hmm. Um, Tony's is like three of their friends and then my brother and then my brother-in-law and I swear like half of his best friends are in my family um which is great but yeah. so with them and their conversations he will wake up and he will have like 200 missed texts oh and I'm just like yeah. I don't know how I don't know how y'all do it. And he's like, typically someone says something and then everyone just sends like crazy, like gifts and pictures and, you know, Nicholas Cage's face on a pickle. And <laughs> I'm like, I don't. So you so can, really, you can start a fire in right? that group Inviting chat. Me. Yeah. It's going to, that, like, that would be a better conversation than like my friends because my, my two best friends would just be like, I'm not high enough for this. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I don't not. have the brain brain power right now to think about that. Not um not at all. Justine, thank you. I, I can't remember if I said thank you already, but thank you so much, Justine. I thank appreciate you. you're helping me with my mediocre evening. <laughs> ah! Thanks, girl. Appreciate you. Um, tomato soup is a hot smoothie. Ca cavity, what? Oh, a, a cavity instead of a hole? Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, oh, Carl, I think you DM'd me and apologized for asking me if I loved my dog. I thought that was very nice of you to apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, best collab ever. Y'all, y'all just wait until Hannah posts a video, and instead of her, it's just me sitting in front. Oh my of god! <laughs> no, we're doing that would it. Be we're, so funny. We're gonna do it, and I'm just gonna act like nothing. It, it's it, nothing's yes. different. And Absolutely then nothing. and then you'll do one in my chair too. I love it. <laughs> That's that my actually favorite. so funny. That'd be amazing. All right, let's continue. And then if she sucks, we'll skip to the next person. I feel like she's gonna suck. As her first one, um, life changing experience, truly life changing experience. So I'm gonna get right into it because I talk a lot. So bear with me if I'm talking a little bit fast right now. Um, but I want to talk about belief and mm. how belief leads and dictates our actions, right? So how what you believe will show up in how you run your business and how you show up for your business. So I'm going to be really honest with you. The few months leading up to Diamond Retreat, maybe like six months leading up to Diamond Retreat, um, I was not doing well with my beliefs and about myself and with this business. And I was a sad girl in a sad girl pit of of belief despair, just like sad girl, right? Sad girl vibes. And I felt really, really stuck. Um, and I stopped showing up in the same way because I was starting to not believe in myself, right? My OGV was dropping, my rank was dropping. And I believed that because those two things were happening, all of a sudden I wasn't able to show up with value anymore. All of a sudden I was a fraud. I didn't have anything to show for the work I was doing. Like these were the lies that were in my head, right? If I was platinum again, I would, but I believed some gnarly things, right? Like about myself because of the numbers in my view and, and my rank dropping. I was like, well, if I was platinum, then, then I'd have value again, right? So I, I believed that my worth and how I showed up was also changing with the numbers in my view, also changing. That is so sad. It is sad. That's really um, sad. Also, Wiggum says hello, obviously. Hi, Wiggum. He is the sweetest baby. I've oh made a horrible God. mistake by putting him up here because now he's just going to want to be up here constantly. <laughs> Good boy. I All love right. it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Not on there. Not on my jumpsuit. Thank you. He's trying to get on the love sack. I swear to God, I let him on there one time. Oh, um, Jason. So Someone said a uh, meeting ID. Uh, no. Um, I we I don't have that. This is a pre-recorded thing. I'm, imagine I'm just like making the people stop talking so we can. Oh, my God. Um, excuse me. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> uh, ladies, would you mind um, kindly uh, shutting up so we can roast you for a minute? Yeah. Um, so, everything she's saying about like, it's all about your beliefs. And if you just believe it, it will happen. And I've kind of gotten some shit on my channel before about like me, me as a person, I don't tend to really believe in like the law of attraction. And I know people do, and that's totally fine. But I have a hard time with this kind of thing of like, if you just believe hard enough, then it will come to you. And I, 
I don't know. I think you could make an argument for both sides, but I tend to lean towards like the things that come to you in your life are because of your, your own work and efforts. And I don't know. I don't know. But whenever people are like, it's all about what you believe. Yeah. Will come no, I, to fruition. I, I completely, I completely agree with that. Um, we agree on a lot of shit, obviously, but it's, you know, I, yes, you know, speak shit into existence or, you know, talk positively about something instead of um, if I, and it's funny because a lot, a lot of these people will call me on it and it, and I'll be like, well, if I ever hit a hundred thousand subscribers, and they're like, no, when, mm. when, when you do. And I'm like, okay, so you're right. I think that, so I think there's a difference between like law of attraction. Like if you just believe it, it will happen versus yeah. how do I word this versus having just a, I hate saying like a positive mindset. Like that term has been ruined for me, but yeah, I'm right there with you versus having gratitude for the things you have and showing appreciation for the things you have and, and hoping for things to happen in the future and things like that. I'm not explaining this well. This is why I need to pre-watch things so I can formulate my thoughts. <laughs> no, there, I, I, I'm, I know what you're trying to say. I'm right there not to try to speak for you, but it's a lot of people will misuse the law of attraction and will try to say like, well, it's just if you believe it, you can do it. And if you just wish it and if you just say it and blindly, whatever, it'll come to you. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what it is. Apparently mm -hmm. or allegedly, whatever, what it actually is, is saying like, no, I'm going to do this. And then you're, it's it's all starting with your mindset, your words. And then from there, then, then you're making that conscious effort and to, yes. you know, put the work forward and work towards it every day and yes. speak positively about it and put it in the forefront of your mind or even the back of your mind all the time. And, you know, trying to always do those little things here and there. Um and, and it's not just like, oh, well, I am I have this blind belief that this is going to happen and I just have to believe hard and that's it and it's going to happen. That's not actually what it is, um, which, of course, I still sometimes think it's bullshit in the way that these people or people in general phrase it, which it's realistically just I, I am this, I am that, whatever, and I'm going to do this. Like, it's kind of essentially like not giving yourself a choice. Like, I... Yeah. A lot of people ask, like, how do you have the motivation to, one, work for yourself, which tricks on you. I don't. Um, and then how do you have the motivation to go work out? Again, tricks on you. I don't. I don't give myself a choice. I, I give myself a rest day or two each week, depending on how hard I work out. But I don't give myself a choice to work out. It's just something we do. And mm -hmm. think, if Tony wasn't working out, I wouldn't be working out. And so thank mm -hmm. God I have him. He's positive. You know, he encourages me. He I tell, I tell him all the time. I'm like, my love language is you walking by me in the gym and I'm switching machines or something. And you like walking by and tapping my butt. Like that's my jam. Give me a fist bump, like mm. whatever. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with that. And he knows that he does that, whatever. But it's like at the beginning, you have to be able to, to do that. You have to be able to force yourself to do something. Then it just becomes your habit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then results come and, um, working out is really like my therapy though. Like I, it's, I, yeah, I, it makes it so that I, I'm able to actually manage my anxiety. Otherwise I would not get out of bed and it would be debilitating, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, I feel like the term that's coming to mind is um, rather than law of attraction, I think I tend to believe more in like self-fulfilling prophecies, I guess. Like if you, if you want something to happen, then you will complete the steps necessary to make that thing happen. So if you're if you have this goal and you believe that you can get there, then you're more likely to take the steps you need to take to be able to get there. Versus if you have this goal and you're like, I can't do it, then you're probably going to be limiting yourself as far as taking those steps to achieve it kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe um, that's what I was trying to say earlier. But Yeah, no, there, yeah, like the whole like manifest it thing. And it's like, mm. it, the problem is, is just like Hannah said earlier, it's something that can be overused and like ruined by these types of people who are like, right. I'm manifesting this to happen to me. And it's like, okay, but what are you doing further than that? Are you just thinking yeah. about it and saying it and writing it on your mood board? Is that what you're doing? Or are you right. actually doing things every single day? Like I can say all day long, no, by the end of September this year, I will have a hundred thousand subscribers, but am I posting three to four videos a week? Am I engaging with my audience? Am I, pushing myself and putting out content that will reach 
other people other than, you know, my primary, um, my primary audience. Am I going on podcasts? Am I, you know, marketing myself? If not, then it's not going to happen. Then I'm just being, mm. a, being a bullshitter. Um, mm. which is, that's frustrating. I was going to say something else, but I completely forgot. I completely agree with all of that though, because I don't think you can just wish for something and then do nothing to help yourself along, I guess exactly. is kind of where I stand on it, but yeah. And I think that's what a lot of these people are doing when they're like, it's all mindset. Well, and it's all it, that what I was going to say is it's another way for them to put it back on you. Like, yes. Oh, well, you're, you're not manifesting it. You're not working hard enough. You're not yes. doing this. And it's like, well, no, I, I am. I'm trying to recruit people. They just don't want to do it. And it's like, well, <laughs> that's exactly it. Because it, like we already previously discussed, it was like, you can't make people sign up if, if what you need, if the actions you need to take to be successful are selling things and recruiting people or keeping those recruits working at the same level, you can't force people to do that. So again, it's like, you can't just wish for something to happen without in this case, other people making it happen. But I, I it's mean, just, if you were their boss, yeah, but in an MLM, everyone's their own boss. So mm, you can't make yeah. anyone do anything which is kind of crazy mm -hmm. yeah yeah um hannah's going in <laughs> i'm just word vomiting is all that's happening i'm thinking out loud this is typically something i would like have a well-formulated thought process before i spoke but not this girl we are not today you're <laughs> my sexual chaos over here changing <laughs> with my rank so i went to diamond retreat and I remember sitting in the jacuzzi with a few different diamonds, just being like a starstruck, young, loving brand partner. And I was asking them uh, different people, their journey, and we're talking about timelines and stuff. And they were all different. But one person said that they took 10 years to get to diamond. And that one sentence just changed it for me because the, in that moment, my belief switched and I believed that even if I was still a consistent and steady gold rank in 10 years, that this would still be worth it. And I would still be in. That is so, I have a lot of things to say. Um, the most cringe when she said I was starstruck. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Being, being starstruck by people you, you work with, yeah no is so fucking weird uh, and essentially that's what they do they're and believe me i've i've been i've been starstruck by a, f a few people in in my lifetime for sure i never let it show i never fangirl i you know treat them like normal people because that's what people want they don't want people all over them um but i listen there have been a few times where i have been and s there have been times where you know very huge huge youtubers i've talked to and even in person or even i had one tell me that they invited me on their podcast they told me that they absolutely love my videos and that they watch almost every single one of them and i was like what yeah. and i turned to tony i was like thank god this shit isn't in person because i would be mm. shitting my pants right now and i'd be embarrassed but but what is it that you're that's loving and idolizing or looking up to it's you know, presumably something of value, which in exactly. my mind, in my mind, a rank in an MLM is not something of value. So well, when and you're it's idolizing like, people in a higher rank, it's like, for what? Because they recruited more people than you? Like, yeah, what is there to idolize? I don't get they're, that. Like they're a top seller in an MLM. It's like, it's different than like someone who's, and not saying like all influencers are famous, but people at like the level that I was just referring to, like, yeah. Like, it's, that's so, it's just so cringy and culty because they put these top leaders on a pedestal. One of my favorite things that I've ever seen in regards to like how it's all a cult is seeing how the girls and the girlies and Monet treat, not to bring her up again, but Jacqueline Ortega, mm -hmm. how they treat her mm -hmm. when she goes to Monation's. It's like freaking royalty. Like they girl, 
nobody outside these companies knew, knows who the hell these people are. That's the thing. Exactly. Like, like, we know who we are or who they are because it's involved with what we do. But like, if I were to go tell my mom, oh, Jacqueline Ortega, she'd be like, who? It's not relevant. It's not no. relevant outside of the business. They, and exactly. that's a big red flag. Like, if yeah. the only reason you're idolizing this person is because of their position within a pyramid and because of what they're trying to portray as like basically as what they're trying to sell you as the lifestyle that they're pitching or whatever. I don't know, not formulating yeah. good thoughts, but there's nothing to be idolized there in my opinion. It's, it's weird because essentially if yes, you think no about it and, and break it down or, or make it more, um, it, you just break it down to actually what it is. They're impressed with how many people, like what rank they're at or how, yes. how successful they are. But essentially, it's how much money they have. Right. That's gross. That's, that's true that's because that's the whole disgusting. goal of the MLM. Yes. That's what it is, is to have yeah. this lifestyle and to have it, – it's you're, – you're putting – you're starstruck because this person has a lot of money. Yeah. That's – I've never thought about it like that, but that's absolutely what it is. Yeah. I was listening to, um, and I've thought about this a lot, but I was listening to something on, um, I forgot who, forgot who Joe Rogan was interviewing. It it was, oh, it was, um, Chris, uh, DiStefano, some shit like that. Um, I I really like him. I've been watching more of his standup and stuff and he's really funny. And so I was watching his, um, his interview with Joe Rogan and, um, Joe Rogan was saying like, and I know a lot of people don't like Joe Rogan. I do, that's uh, that's not what this is about. I don't care. <laughs> um, just put, to put that out there because I know someone's going to be like, oh, my God, ew. It's like, yeah. should be quiet. It's um, nice. That's not the point. So the message is still very important. So he was saying that he was watching um, this like documentary, reading like a book or something about um, this person who had been interviewing people on their death uh, deathbeds. Oh, my gosh. I'll see. Mm-hmm. On their deathbeds. Oh, wow. And how – we shouldn't essentially this the moral of what he was saying was like we shouldn't chase like money you shouldn't have like money be you know what exactly what like you're trying to obtain and live Mm -hmm. your life and have so much fun but in and he mentioned hustle culture and all that and he's like but in this hustle culture you we want more and more and more and more and he's like but for what like Mm -hmm. is it your responsibility to pass things down to your kids no, yeah. you should be, you know, setting them up for success and passing down, you know, morals and standards and, you know, ideas and things like that. And so it's just so interesting because, for instance, like I, I could not have I, if I didn't grow on my YouTube channel for the next forever, I'd still be fine. I, I'm mm-hmm. very happy with where I am. Obviously, I would love to grow more, but to, you know, get the message out there or whatever and, you know, be able to retire my husband realistically just get to have him have a lower paying job so he can not get shot at for his job Mm -hmm. um and have him do something safer work at fucking home depot i don't know (laughs) that's that's, he said that's what he wants to do i love love that but it's yeah right we love a a diy king um but it's just so crazy that a lot this is one thing that they get in their head and it really is that hustle culture of this is important money's important You you need to do this you need to do that and it's just so, so, so toxic. Like y'all talk about mindset and being free and putting yourself first, but it's like, no, y'all, y'all put money first. That's what you're yeah, doing. That's all it is. It's, it's, it's a money motive disguised as helping people disguised as um, like giving people the life of their dreams and things like that. And I just can't stand that kind of thing because like you said, the, the, the money is the motive behind everything. And when yep. you're idolizing the people at the top, that is what you're idolizing. Like they, what have they offered to you that is worth, what am I trying to say? What do they bring to the table that's worth other than money? Yeah. Nothing. Like it's, I don't know. That's really sad to me. And I've never yeah. really thought about it like that before because I, I don't think it's it's a bad thing to have role models or people you look look up to, but what are the reasons that you're looking up to those people? Like, yeah. what about them do you want to aspire to be? And if the motive is more money, I don't think that's valuable. No, like I um I told uh, the story on my live stream of the day about how I got um <laughs> the most recent time I was starstruck was when I met um I met a, for, a retired detective 
who arrested one of the most prolific serial killers here oh, cool. in, in yeah. like my area. Wow. And he is such a badass and he's just so just so cool and mm -hmm. he's oh my god he's awesome and i never knew that he was friends with my dad in like elementary school and then oh, he, wow. ha he had like vacationed like he's in the little like vacation friend group of my in-laws and mm -hmm. um and he came to my father-in-law's 70th birthday party and i was standing there with my parents and you know the guy um came right up to my dad and started talking to him and tony walks by me and he goes you know who that is right and i was like what who and he goes that's blah 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 and i was like what i was so wedding i turned mm -hmm. to my mom and i was like he's such an icon like he's amazing i cannot but like i want to ask him so many questions and mm -hmm. my mom turned to me after like a few drinks and she's like chelsea why is he an icon again I was like, <laughs> I was like mom get it together yeah yeah nerd out with me like that type of shit is it's amazing i mean even people you know in this space like um robert fitzpatrick and you know bill keep and um mm -hmm. uh, steve St stephen hassan i mean i've dm'd with him like twice and every time i'm like oh, that's, it cool. happened. He DM'd that's DM'd awesome <laughs> i've never oh. tried but that is so cool yeah. yeah i've tagged him in a few things and then i i like quoted him in like in a dm and i just said i was like this is so profound like i, I was you know rereading one of your books today and I, I really appreciate this so thank you for the work you do or um i like said like oh he he was on this podcast episode and it was so good and i mm -hmm. um told him i was like it was hilarious like you're the way you explain things is just so so approachable and so um like a attainable i guess is what i want to mm -hmm. say but it, it's just so good and he was so he was so funny. He was mm -hmm. like, oh, my God. Well, thank you so much. His little – not he's not little, and I don't want to, like, make him sound like a, like a little child, but, like, his little voice is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That it, I stay on him all day long. Like, I will – if I ever get to meet him, I will probably yeah. have to take a Xanax before or something because I don't yeah. know how I – I don't know how I'm going to act. Um, all right. Sorry. <laughs> And we see people on Instagram and we compare ourselves, right? So like we see people hitting diamond in like five seconds and silver in four months. And we're like, who am I? And we can start to believe that, that if that's not our timeline, if that's not our story, then our story isn't as important, that what we have to offer isn't as important. And if we believe that what we have to offer isn't as important or like important at all, then we're just going to stop showing up, right? We're going to stop offering anything at all because why bother? So, okay, I want you to think about what you believe. This might be a little uncomfy for some people, but I want you to think about what you truly believe. Not the like can-do positive attitude hat we put on sometimes, but like the actual core beliefs that you have about yourself and this business and your customers and your brand partners. And then once you do that, you can connect how your actions are being driven by those beliefs. Okay. So if you are someone that believes that no one really wants to listen to you, then you might be someone that doesn't speak up very much. Okay. So like, that's the belief. The belief is no one wants to listen to me. So the action is silence or not speaking up. Right. I agree if with that. If you believe your body. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's kind of actually what we were just talking about yeah. with the, like your, how your belief is first. Yeah. Like if I, if I believe, you know, th this, no one wants to hear my take on, or let's use this for an example. Like, oh, I'm going to do a live show tonight. I just decided that today. I was like, Tony's going to be, you know, working a job tonight. I should do a live show. It's end of the month. You know, I, I'm very transparent. I'm like, I'm trying to hit a million, a million channel views this month. Like I got to, you know, do a live show tonight. And I thought about it. I was like, oh my God, I should like see if anyone else wants to come on. And I was thinking about it more. I was like, Hannah, and I haven't done one. If I would have thought like, Hey, well, Hannah doesn't want to fucking come on my channel. Like she's mm -hmm. growing so much. Like, yeah, she's been nice to me, but like, I nah, then okay, I wouldn't have asked you. Mm. But meanwhile, I I don't fucking care about any of that. And I even if that was true, and I will always ask everyone because you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. That's fair. Yeah, like the way that you think about something and the way that you frame something impacts your decision to act on it. So. I, yeah, in that sense, I don't disagree with whatever she's about to say. Well, I don't know what she's about to say, but I don't <laughs> disagree with let's, that. Yeah, let's pump yeah. the brakes, girl. <laughs> yeah, I don't, 
I can't say I condone everything she's about to say, but I don't disagree with that. She's yeah. kind of kind of confirming what we already talked if, about that. Yeah, you can have a thought, but if you don't act on that thought or or the thought you have impacts the way that you do act, that can really change the the outcome. So I love that y'all just understood my um yeah, that's amazing. Uh behind my car okay sorry uh yeah that's perfect um yes and one thing not to keep going with the sports metaphors but if you don't aim when you take the shot you're not going to hit the goal you mm -hmm. have to aim for what you're actually trying to hit you're going to miss if not so it yeah. starts yeah. with the thought or rather having the idea of like i'm gonna i want to do this mm -hmm. and then the thought or belief of i am going to do this Mm -hmm. And then what action do I need to take to get there? And mm -hmm. a lot of times people will, will go off with this huge, huge goal. And it's like, no, 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 it, or sure. Or, you know, I always say like, take it, you know, quarter by quarter or week by week, month by month, whatever, do little things. And if you have a big goal, I have a goal for this year. Okay. We'll break it down into quarter by quarter, month by month. What do I have to do every week to get mm -hmm. to that point? Do mm -hmm. one thing every day to get you to that big goal. Right. Um, I like, I like this comment that says that's how they get people. They, there are real truths sprinkled in. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I say <laughs> that a lot as well is that that's how actually exactly that is that they get you with not only real truths sprinkled in, but truths in regards to life that like, oh, hold on. We're going to be like chewing on his foot. Hey, sir, sir, that's disgusting. We don't do that here. Hey, <laughs> sir, you're going to be kicked out. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Oh, that was rude. Don't do that. He just harumphed at me. He's like, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So they they'll tell you truths that apply to other things in life or apply to working out or apply to actually owning a business. Yes. But don't apply in the context of an MLM. Absolutely so correct. True. So true. Yeah. I completely yes. agree. Um, they use actual psychological and personal development concepts, but in a very toxic I way. I added in very. Yeah. Yes. One million. One million percent. Yeah, I agree. Oh, thank you. Are you being good now? That's a good boy. Okay. Bothering people when you want to talk to them about oils. Well, then you're probably not talking to people about oils because who wants okay. to bother people, right? Um, one second. I have to let my friend inside and then we will give closing thoughts and I'm sweating. So just like, I don't want to be a bad friend but she's like waiting outside my house. So <laughs> I'll take Dude. it from here. I'll see. <laughs> um, so give more of your thoughts and just like, I'll be right back. Wonderful. I'm just going to look at the comments because I haven't even really glanced over here at all. Oh my gosh. I just like started to scroll through them thinking that I could highlight them, but I can't, I don't have that power over here. I'm happy that everyone is enjoying this. This has been really fun. Yeah. This morning, Chelsea was, I just got a DM and she was like, want to hang out on a live stream? I was like, frick yeah, let's do it. Because we've kind of talked about meeting up, but not acted on that yet. I want to know what everyone is doing on their Saturday night. Other than this, I guess. <laughs> oh, this has been a fresh, a fresh of breath air is what I was just going to say, Melissa. This has been a breath of fresh air today. I'm so, I'm so happy. Yay. This is live. Yeah, Chelsea just ran to grab her friend from the door, but she'll be right back. Cooking. Ooh, got in Greek food, budgeting. Nice. Pokemon. Oh, recovering from my wisdom teeth. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's no fun. <clears throat> Working on one of my dollhouse rooms, making the wallpaper and bedding. That's awesome. Playing violin. You guys are so good at multitasking. When I watch a live stream, I'm like just sitting watching the live stream. <laughs> I don't know how people multitask like this. I guess it is mostly audio. So. <laughs> what if you were just sitting down and people are like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> right? Incredible. Yeah. I need to know how the love sack is. Taylor, how is well, it? Well, if I had to review it. Okay. Love sack review. Go. The only thing I would change. It's great. You want a cup holder, don't you? definitely a cup holder and I think there should be like a built-in blanket like where you just 
it's attached to the side so you don't have to like go get one or did you forget to bring it oh. like, just blanket maybe even like a sheet and a blanket option but and maybe like a pillow option too that folds over so i'm gonna need you to come on <laughs> other than that it's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> I mean, those are great suggestions. I think you should write a letter or something. Yeah, I'm still keeping it without all of those things. Oh my God. <laughs> um, Hannah, this is Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Taylor. This is Hannah. Hi. Nice um, to meet you. There's, you. there's about 600 other people Hello. here as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the whole gang is here. Um, yes. God, it smells like yours in it. Um, well... We how how many minutes did we get? We got through. Hey, that was pretty good. We got through twenty three minutes. Good lord, so I much know. to discuss. It's well, just, the thing is, I can just get going on tangents. You know, like I my brain just continues down these paths that I can't. No, I get mean, a hold same, of, so. but but typically when I do these, I speed them up. Oh so yeah, okay. Yeah, so I mean, I'm playing it on like one and a half speed or like mm. one point two five. Um, That's a good but, idea. The bunch of people are saying hi to you. They're saying hi, Taylor. Hi. <laughs> um, not so. T not Taylor. This is not the Taylor that's married to my brother. This is no, me. <laughs> this is <laughs> be nice. Um, so me and my sisters. Me and my husband. Nope. Nope. Hold on. I'll get there. I will get there. Me and my brother's wife, Taylor. This is our best friend. Sister-in-law. Okay, but I had to explain it <laughs> the other way. Um. I'm sweating she, the way she said now. I mean, I wouldn't want to be married to him either. He is great <laughs> for her, <laughs> not for us. Um, also, that's illegal. But um, yeah, so Hannah, do you have any closing thoughts or anything that you would like to say to uh, the people of the world? Oh, wow. <laughs> what a platform. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. it's endless. <laughs> I, nothing really related to the call, but I'm just like, this was really fun. And I like to have conversations with people who like also really understand the issue at hand kind of, it's like really fun to just discuss it. And I thought this was really fun and thank you for inviting me. I was of excited course. when I got that message. So yeah, I was well, again, this was great. really surprised that you said yes. Why? <laughs> I mean, I probably would have said no to me. <laughs> Really? No, I was like, sure, let's do it. Like, I'm always open to that kind of thing. I think it's great. I mean, Hannah, you're like, you, I, I honestly, and don't get, you don't be weird, but I think <laughs> in the next, I really think in the next like two or three months, you're going to surpass me in subscribers. Oh no, I don't. I don't. Oh, I had, I had like a freak accident kind of like I had one video that went crazy and that's, I went from 20 to 40 in six weeks, which in, in these days, these days, it's not like that at all. Like I'm very much back down. It was like this. I went like this whoa and now I'm right back down where I was so unless another video pops off or something like that but I'm can, I'm so thrilled though like that. with the way that it's been going even in the quote-unquote like slower phases before and after this peak I'm more than happy with that I think it's yeah. it's been going way better than I could have ever imagined and I'm so grateful for anybody who <laughs> takes time out of their life to hear what I have to say I just think that's exactly really you are you are amazing and the people love you. I don't know if you have seen on um the the hate threads about me, but they love oh, me I don't more look. than they like me. I don't look. Uh, I don't look at that. But yeah, don't that's my advice. Don't don't read the comments and don't look at those things. I mean your own no. comments, obviously. Um, but no, I, I can definitely agree with the uh the like ebbs and flows and stuff. I mean, I I got you know, I mean, really only 2000, uh, like a year ago from, um, uh, from Josh doing a collab with him. And then, mm. um, about, uh, like, I want to say like a thousand from, um, uh, James Welsh giving me a shout out in the beginning, of one of his videos, which was awesome. So and nice. then, yeah. yeah, he's, I, I love the Welsh twins. They're amazing. Robert and James, they're awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, a few podcasts I've been on, I've gotten a few, but even, you know, doing the video with, Sloan and then also uh another recent video I did recently it has like 180,000 views and I That's posted amazing. it two weeks ago yeah wow. the Michelle Fawn one which is absolutely wow. That's great 
That's yeah. great. It, and I and it, it's not nimble in video, which I was so mm-hmm. happy that just the commentary video I did like popped off. So yeah. that's super exciting. And I'm super um super happy for you. And I can't wait to see you grow more and absolutely surpass me. I don't think that will happen, but I I I just feel like I got like a lucky algorithm thing is basically how I think of it. I'm just like, wow, that was really lucky. <laughs> I feel but- you. Anyway, well, it's, it's here's fun to, to see you the and Shamora's algorithm. I don't have anything left, but cheers to you. She's already done with her drink. Um, I mean, as I've, I'm almost done with two already. Um, I kept telling them, I was like, oh, we're going to have to Uber to dinner. <laughs> I was like, yes, we're taking an Uber. Yeah, that's I mean, how. Karaoke, maybe. <gasps> I know. I already have a plan, but I haven't told you yet. Bitch, I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I want to go dance. Rock and roll. I know. Can, should we go to the gay bar? Well, I was thinking we could go to um, that green Warna place. I heard it's a little. Nope, you've never the have one you ever on been? the one on West Shore. Yeah, I hear it's so much fun. Shit and pops off. Music. And then there's a karaoke bar that Julian knows, and so that was my guts. The nightcap. I already have a whole itinerary. I'm so excited. I'm wearing out. flats. Your girl. It, oh, I might wear my Air Force ones and just pop that booty. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Hannah, you got to come to Tampa. It's real fun. I'm sure um, it is. Coast. Where? Like by where this, I was about to say where the spaceships are. Oh my God. What? I mean, not wrong. Not wrong. I live by the spaceships. Yes. Like California coast? No, or here. Like, I live like by Kennedy Space Center, kind of like on the space where coast. The oh, are. got it. Like, like Boca? Up. Area? Uh, like Cocoa like- Beach area. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's not that far. No. Mm-mm. We got to go get her. It's only like two hours away, two and a half. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I got an easy pass. I got myself a toll pass. Ooh, never, never had one of those in my life. So, oh yeah, girl, it's a it's called Sun Pass over here. But oh yes, Are you from here? no, I'm not. I'm from Washington State. So oh, really, no. complete so opposite ends of the country now. There. But I swear, I grew up going to a dude ranch. They're riding horses. I did do not. Couldn't make that up. <laughs> I really think you could. Well, this well, is I'm not. this is basically just a FaceTime at this point. Yeah. Um, so we'll uh, like Boca, yeah, um, so, and make a vlog. I mean, I, my vlogs are chaotic, just like I am. Um, they're actually very calming because I garden in them. It's completely different than how I actually am. So um, <laughs> yeah, just it's been a pleasure, guys. I'm Hannah. Stay on for like a second. Don't leave me yet. Um, You've been amazing, guys. Please go subscribe to Hannah. She is awesome. She's the best. And she's just a breath of breath air. Yes. <laughs> breath of breath air. Yeah. She's Love a breath of breath you. air. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging with us. Goodbye. See ya. Bye. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>